Then, as a Mashiach hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath seek from sin. Con. When you're suffering in the flesh, that means you're not letting your flesh get uh, get its pleasure. That uh -huh. means you're not sinning. That means you're trying your best not to sin, man. All right? Because when you suffer in the flesh, that means you're you're feeding your spirit. All right? You can't feed both. They're both contrary to the other. All right? So, it's luck. Con. Verse 2. That, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of Yahweh. We're not no longer living our lives to the lust of our flesh, man. We put down the blunt, man. We stop committing adultery, right? We committed our lives to Yahweh, but to the death, man. All right? Uh, get open uh, direct to the court. All right? It says, uh, strive to the truth to death, man. Uh, and if I can't add, it says, uh, about how patience holds back and suffers. Yes, suffering holds back and patience. So, what are we doing right now? Being patient with Yahweh Hashem for return, but in that time, we're going to be suffering, man. Uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Uh, if, we, if we keep enduring until the death, man, the Lord's going to fight for us, man. The Lord fights for us every single day, man. The, the fact that we're still alive proves that the Lord is out here fighting for us, man. The fact that we still have breath, the fact that we're able to do the work, proves that the Lord is out here fighting for us, man. Because we could have died a thousand times, a uh, uh, hundred times ago, man. Uh, a bunch, uh, all of our lifetimes we committed sin, we committed uh, wickedness. So we we will die uh, all of our lifetimes. But the water to Yahweh, 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 we're here able to do this work, man. Uh, Romans 8 says that uh, the suffering that we're enduring now is nothing compared to for the kingdom, rough paraphrasing. So we gotta suffer now before we endure. Alright, and uh the acts as well, bump and, and, that, and that's true because sometimes, you know, uh see we, we understand that through the spirit, but our people in the world they don't understand that. You know, the things that we're going through now, it's only temporary. Yep, yep, yep. You know, that, that's what helps you not to crash. You know what I'm saying? That that's what helps you to be more patient in the spirit, man. You know, because of that precept, man. It's not this is not gonna last forever. You know, the kingdom of heaven is promised to us, an everlasting kingdom, that's promised unto us. Not not this tribulation that we're going through, you right. know? Right, Second Corinthians speaks about our, our, our light affliction. You know, we're doing our light affliction right now because again, it doesn't exceed to the glory that we're about to come into, man. So that's why in this time period, you have to suffer. It speaks about in the book of Hebrews, how the heavenly father chastised it uh, the son whom we love, roughly paraphrasing, man. Yep. So you have to be going through something in order to gain something, man. And if you want to look at carnally, these niggas play football, basketball, rap careers, they got to put something in to get something out. Even though it's on that left hand side, we're doing it on the right hand with their righteousness. Yeah, those athletes, I'm, I, can't, I can't knock their hustle. They do put in work, they train, they hustle. A lot of them sacrifice, you know, family members and stuff like that to get to an upper echelon. But they do put in the work to get where they're at. It's like, we got to put in the work to get to where we want to go, man. And that work is going to be uh, difficult, all right? There's nothing in this world that gained easily that's worth it, man. Something as easy as it isn't working. So through much tribulation, we got to endure to get to the kingdom, man. And, and when, they, when they do that work during the off season and stuff like that, that's all for the playoffs. Yep, yep, yep. That's all, you know, we're, we're going into the playoffs. Jacob's trouble is the playoffs. Yep, 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 you know, the, what we're doing now, this is regular season. You know, because you do all that training so that you're strong enough to endure the playoffs. Yep, yep, yep. You know, the Lord is building us up that we're strong enough to endure Jacob's trouble, man. You know, there was, so this is why we, we say, man, it's, it's you have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it's not an easy thing at first, you know, because you're trusting in the Lord. And that means putting away the ways of the world. 
and applying his ways and trusting in the Lord and the things that he's told us. You know, that, 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 that's the things that we exercise ourselves in today. But, you know, once again, it's not an easy thing. But once you learn to trust in the Lord, it's going to be an easy, it's going to be easy, easier for us in, in Jacob's trouble. Right. So, that's the spirit because the quails are harder than the regular season. Right. That's why they keep different stats, the regular season stats and quail stats. You're preparing for the quails, and the quails are way harder. Everything is tougher, man. The defense is tougher, the offense is tougher, the, the referees are a little more, you know, stricter and looser. All right, so then you get fouled harder. And that's the hour of temptation. Yep, yep. Because one thing about the playoffs, they have time to learn about you. Yep. Not in all your moves, what you like and what you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Now you all the not all the things that you worked on, your weaknesses, now this is where it comes into play. They know that you like to go right all the time. Well now throughout the season you have to learn to go well, you like to go left all the time. Throughout this now in the playoffs you gotta learn to go yep, yep, right. Right, you know? Yeah, yeah. It speaks about how it says how Satan had the bar to sift us as a weak man. Right. Every every member, in a way, has a spiritual bounty on their head, man. And Satan trying to collect it, man. You know, trying to sift you out. So again, you're gonna be met with opportunity. You're gonna be met with things that come up where you have to, you know, filter it through the scriptures. You have to go through it. All right. Because again, Satan has desired to sift us as weak, man. But the scripture goes into how you how we shall pray for it, man. Yep, that's uh, 1 Peter 5 and 9 goes into that. Like what you said, every member of the elect has a bounty on their head from Satan. You know? Yeah. Right, book of Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Through right, much tribulation we gotta enter into the kingdom. You can't get a ring without going through the playoffs. You can't go and get a ring without getting going through that fire, man. All right? That's why you see a lot of uh, uh, athletes, what do they do when they uh, get, finally get the championship? They start crying, right? They, they, they're overwhelmed with joy, they start crying. Even some of them that lose, they start crying, man. It's, not, it's, not, it's gonna be us, man. And then we'll see them crying with more willing to be part of that number. We all watch me all shot. Whoa, that's a fear. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanna say this, um, you know, these demons and Satan are trying to mess with you in your sleep. Yep. You know, um, sometimes you'll have those uh, visions and, and dreams right and you just gotta you really have to be have to have spiritual discernment right when it comes to you having dreams man all right because a dream could take could take you over a dream could bug you out you see and say to come in and show you something and you be like oh man like you you think it's some type of way it could be about a brother it could be something wrong something off but you gotta have that's your flesh yeah. your flesh is telling you something that you re that's really not true you see, so you got to be careful. Now, we know that the Lord uh, gives dreams unto men for wise counsel, but he also says, uh, go ahead. Get this, all right. So I'm at 24 and 7. For dreams have deceived many. They have failed that, that put their trust in them. See that? For dreams have deceived many, man. All right? Dreams have deceived many, so that's a great deception. That's another way Satan and demons can attack you because when you sleep, you're vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? You you you're sitting there. You you you're, everything's lying lying. That's why y'all uh, you know tying. I'm not trying to necessarily switch gears here, brother. So it's a lot here. But you know that's why like uh you know they'll say the the, uh, the the witch on your back and all of that witch riding your back. You know because when you sleep you're vulnerable, man. And so your senses are now can be impaired by those demons. So you got to be sure to make sure Satan not using that as a uh, a tool to get the best of you, man. Yeah, brother, no. Kind of, you know, they say sleep is the cousin of death. So when you're sleeping, you're kind of like that, that, that realm between the spirit realm and the physical realm is very thin. Yeah, that yeah. veil, you it's know, kind of like you paralyzed. When yeah. You sleep, you're kind of paralyzed because especially so a lot of people go into deeper sleeps or when you're in that REM sleep, it's much harder to wake you up. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's a good point, brother. But those dreams, dreams look the fool. So I'm just saying this for like, uh, as far as really the what I'm trying to say, as far as Satan, right? Satan can try to sift you. Even in time, he's always going to look for vulnerable moments to try to get the best. So you just got to use wisdom, all right, and pray to the Lord. That's the, that's the truth in the spirit because a lot of times things will get mad at you for something they see in a dream. <laughs> they get mad at you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the demon tempting them, trying to cause uh, uh, division in the household, man. And the dream be about some shit you ain't even yep, do. Yep, yep. <laughs> it'll be 100% innocent. It'll be some random shit. I woke up and uh, I, I, I woke up and uh, you were with another girl in my dream. So who is she? What's her name? <laughs> you tell me. You dream about it. 
Right. So they'll take the dream series, but not with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book of Job, chapter 33, verse 15, in a dream and a vision of the night when deep sleep fallen upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened up the ears of men and sealed their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and find Christ to men. That rapid eye movement sleep, that's when you're getting programmed by y'all watching y'all shot. Even if it's on the left order, right hand side, man. Yep. Listen, if you get it programmed by a demon, hey, you low key get it programmed by y'all watching y'all shot on the left hand side, man. He wants you to be that wicked person. Because uh, what does Sarek 39 say? There'll be spirits created for vengeance. So you might program to be doing some demonic shit to judge somebody else for what they did, man. Right. The Lord kills two birds with one stone at one time at the same time, man. You know, I had a I had a testimony on that the other day. I had a dream about uh, one of the brothers out in Miami. The same day I woke up, I watched his lesson. It was like the Lord programmed me to watch his lesson that day. You know what I'm saying? So, con. Did it pop up when you like your your feed or? It, it was just through the spirit. Like I ended up scrolling past it. You know. Be like that, man. The Lord, the Lord directs our steps, man. Yep. There's nothing that we do in our life that is not directed by Yahweh by Shemiah Tribe, man. Uh, and one thing you can pay attention to and realize is even if something don't make sense at the point in time, later on the Lord reveals more, more, more revealing thoughts and understanding to you. It's like, oh, okay, definitely nothing happens for a reason. I mean, definitely everything happens for you. We'll go back to that first Peter. Uh, book of first Peter, chapter four, verse three. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, Revealings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it's true that ye were not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of them. Yeah, that's the Gentile thing. Come on, be out here, out here full of lust, doing, do, living the way you want to live. The YOLO, you only live once. Uh, having that spirit is a Gentile state of mind. So when you find your house by Shimi you no longer running with that circle, man. You want to run with the right hand side, they're going to think it's weird. They're going to think, yo, what's wrong with you? Why you don't want to get drunk with us on a Sunday afternoon, man? Why you don't want to out, come out here and commit adultery with other man's wife, man? Why, do you, why don't you want to get this drunk with us anymore, man? You, you're acting strange, man. This, this guy's weird, man. All right? Verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to Yahweh in the spirit. Come on. Verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand, but ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Verse I, 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 I wanted to ask something on that. Uh, uh, what, what that third verse you read where it says, they think it's strange. The scripture speak about what it says when a man depart from sin and makes his, he can make himself a prey. Yeah. Prayer, right. prayer, like that, just to show you, when you depart from what the world is going into, hey, them demons want to get you back in more. You know, so that's why I say they think it's strange. Like, you know, what are we doing that wrong? That's the mindset of the people that's in the world, man. So that goes back into that pray, you know, that prey mentality. It goes back to demons trying to get on you, man. You know, this is spiritual warfare. That's why I speak about that in the book of Ephesians, man. This being a spiritual warfare, man. Meaning that war, warfare going back into war. You know, so what the main point that demons want to do is to sift you from the faith, man. That's why you got to fight. Scripture speak about it. Fighting the good fight of faith. That's why the Lord will always put you in the place of uh, in a position of making that decision. Because at, when, as time goes by, you know your, your family and friends they're talking about you. Yep. All right, they're, they're they're talking about you, and you're gonna get that feeling. You know when you come around, you're gonna get that feeling when when the phone calls they stop come they stop uh they start they stop calling. You, all right. But the scripture says in Luke six verse twenty two, it says, "Blessed are ye when men shall hate you." And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake, because they're looking at you according to the world looks at you know how, how the world looks at you. You know, they're looking at they're like, man, God, God don't hate. He over here preaching hate, man. I, man, I love this over. I love the white man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll make up all these excuses, but you when you're speaking to them, you're coming out of the scriptures. Right. All right, you let them know what the scriptures say. Not what the world says. Not what I, we're not telling people what we're, what we're uh, thinking of our own heart. You know, we're telling you what the Lord thinks. You know, and and, and, and it's at that point in your, of your life where you're gonna have to make that decision. You know, like, well, man, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily push them away because the Lord is gonna push them away for you. You know, so they're gonna move away from you. But 
you make that choice by sticking to the Lord and sticking close to Him. Right. All right. Because if you make the choice by hanging out with your friends, you, you with your friends, your family, your friends, then you gonna stray away from the scripture. Right. They gonna call you on that Friday or that Sunday afternoon, like, yo, come hang out. All right. You may make up an excuse not to go out on the highways and byways to hang out with your homeboys. Right. That's why I put a word so so separate yourself. Come. That's that's where the separation comes. The separation comes. The spirit of the scripture. That's why I says, blessed is he when men separate from you. Because when you come in the faith, you know, not the scripture speaks about forsaking not an old friend, but you make that separation, man. You know, we can't do the things that we used to do, but I still come chill with you. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, let's, we'll go There's get out and get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? You may have pork on your plate, but I'm going to have chicken. Right. <laughs> so, hey, I don't approve of what you're eating, but you're not serving the Lord, so. What does it mean to you? <laughs> this is uh, Ephesians 4 and 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the seat of us. You know, and the scriptures uh, say, you know, when we was a child, you know, when we, when we was a child, when we, when we was, you know, we're prepared for it, we was, uh, you spake as a child, you thought as a child, we're prepared for it. You know, we, we put away that, that weak, childish nature. You know, and the Lord is commanding us to be men now. So we no longer, we no longer think the same way. We no longer uh, carry ourselves the same way. We no longer dress uh, uh, a certain, I mean, we no, we no longer dress um, a certain way. You know, the Lord, we're, we're putting on a new man. Yeah. Read that again, uh, Ephesians 4, 22. And he put off the turning the former conversation of the old man, which is, a, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that uh, renewed is going back to be refreshed. Then we keep being brought back to who we truly are. Okay, we're not carrying ourselves as thugs, okay, which is, you know, uh, going back to the Edomites, you know, a uh, 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 goddess, okay? So so we're, we're, we're fashioning ourselves unlike unto your house shine. And it says 24, and, and that ye put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, so yeah, we still got this, we still in this flesh, okay? You know, brothers, you know, still got the tattoos on your outer on, on, on your outer skin, but inwardly we're 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 new. We're no longer we're no longer that old man, man. We no longer smoke. We no longer uh, commit adultery. We we know we know we no longer go out and and get drunk. You know, we're, we're friends in the world. We're we're we're, we're new men. Right. Bro, I got a, a lot. I got a book. Uh, I got a precept in that book. Ecclesiastes chapter eleven verse ten. Therefore, remove the sorrow from thy heart. Put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth are vanity. Like the brother said, we gotta grow up. You know, became man, put up that old man day by day, you know, day in and day out. That's right. Book of First Peter, chapter two, verse twelve. Having conversations, verse eleven. Starting at verse eleven. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. You know, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. It's like we were saying earlier. Your, your, your uh, flesh and your soul, they war against each other, man. The things that you want to do in the spirit, your flesh doesn't want to do, man. Your spirit wants you to fast, but your flesh doesn't want you to fast. Your spirit wants you to pray, and your flesh doesn't want you to pray. Your spirit wants you to know, to, to read. Your flesh doesn't want you to read, man. All right? This is why they have war with each other, man. This is why it's a spiritual battle, man. All right? You cannot win a spiritual battle being a uh, flesh, being a struggle, man. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Uh, this, this is the battle that we're fighting, man. This is the, this is the battle that we're born to fight, man. All right? So this is spirituality, man. We're fighting with the words of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And, it's, and it's the, the, this shows the strength of the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai's words. We're going to use the words of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to destroy the strongest kingdom that was ever on the face of the earth, man. I have a quick precept, you know, just for, you know, uh, uh, the precept that you brought out, um, I wanted to uh, match that with uh, Sirach 17, verse 25. It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less, okay? You have to offend less, man. You, you There's going to be times where you slip up. There's going to be times where you, you, you may offend, man, but offend less, man. You know, and, and pray unto the Heavenly Father, man, for strength, man, for mercy. All right, that you may endure, man. But that's one thing, man. You can't just, you can't, if, if you're not, if you're not praying unto 
the Heavenly Father, then you don't care about your soul. You have to pray to the Heavenly Father. You have to, you know, uh, uh, pray for mercy, man. All right? And offend less to the best of your ability, man. Because coming to this truth, you know, most people think that we're just, you know, we proclaim ourselves to be, you know, uh, 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 perfect. We're not perfect, man. But through the Spirit and power, how much we're show we're perfect. You know, but we're not perfect because we're, we're bound to this flesh, man. To, to these chains of darkness, man. We're, we're, we're still in, under subjection, you know, to uh, you know, in the hands of our enemies. You know, we're completely surrounded by things that tempt us, you know, every day, all throughout the day, around the clock. But you know, to the best of your ability, offend less. And it says, turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for He will lead thee out of darkness into the light of help. And hate thou abomination vehemently, man. When you see abominations being done, you're supposed to hate it, man. All right, because if you don't hate it, you love it. All right, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay, man. You can't be double-minded. You know, it's either you agree with it or, or, or you don't. Make that you have to make that choice. Now, how do you offend less? You work out your, son, your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's how we persuade man through fear and trembling. When you fear the Lord, that's when you begin to you, you understand wisdom. That's when you know how to walk better day in and day out. Go ahead, bring on. All right, this is James chapter 1 and verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfertility and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. And that word engrafted is like uh, receiving instruction. Continuing on with the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, verse 13, Salakia, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Uh, that's really the point of that. That's really going into, you know, obeying the higher power, right? The one that's deep, it's not telling you to disobey y'all by some y'all's child, right? All right? Book of Romans chapter 8, verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for again. Verse 18. Book of Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's right. You know, the sufferings of this time, the afflictions that we're going through is light, man. All right? It's a light affliction, the things that we're going through. And I, I get it, brothers, you know. We in hell, so it, it might not seem like a light affliction while you're in it, right? When you when you when your bills can't be paid, when you can't, it seems like days you might not be able to put food on the table. You know, it seems uh, uh, your job giving you hell, your woman giving you hell. When you going through it, you getting afflicted. You know what I'm saying? If somebody punch you, you like shit. It hurt. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, the Lord didn't give you over to death. You see what I'm saying? You're still living to fight another day, but the, the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Now, that's the important part. You see, all of the, the, the pain that we had to go through, all of the suffering that we got to go through, all of the, the punches we got to take, if you will, the, 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 the Lord is it's going to be so glorious that he's going to even take the pain away. That's how glorious he said his, the glory that's going to be revealed in us. He said, shall not be no more pain, no more death, no more sorrow, man. So he's going to take all that away. So that's why we got to go through these things, right? This suffering so that we can get the glory that the Heavenly Father wants to reveal in us. But these people, they're not looking for the glory of the Lord, all right? They're seeking the ways of this life, man. The, the affairs of this life is what got these people entangled up, man. These people only care about uh, serving idol gods, right? Smoking, right? Uh, getting drunk off their asses. That's all these people in this society care about. They don't care about truth. They don't care about life. They don't care about the glory and the will of the Heavenly Father. Right? So what do you think What do you think is going to happen to you? For it was a light affliction for us, but it's going to, the, y'all, the affliction that's going to come upon this world, now, that's going to be something that these people are not able to bear. Right? Because people always, they always say that in the world. The Lord, God's not going to put more on you than you can bear. That's talking about the people that believe, man. You know? But all you other people that don't believe, the Lord going to put more on your ass than you can bear, man. That weight going to get real heavy, man. You know? Okay, what uh, what what Cain say to the Most High? My punishment is greater than I can bear. Yeah. Ooh, that's right, brother. I had a quick one. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 24 and verse 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. That's right. And that, that's, you know, those missiles, right? 
going to rain down on this place, and that's literally going to be something more than you can bear, man. All right? You know, that, that the Jacob struggle going to be one thing, but that, that them missiles, man, it's going to be heavy upon you people, man. You know, to the point where your spirit is burning, that's a whole different type of judgment. That's a whole different type of affliction, man. That's an affliction we don't want no parts of. We don't even want to know that type of affliction, man, because that's going to be something that's going to be heavy, that's going to be detrimental, that you're going to wish. That's People are going to really wish they would have repented while they fell in that fire, man. You know? 200 million missiles times 200,000 pounds of each missile. That, that's too much for you to even to think about. You know? <laughs> right. We don't want nothing to do with that. That's right. One, a different part in the Lord's will. The bar you got uh, This is Sirach 41 and 1. Oh, death. How bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions. You see, so when these, when these, when west of this world, okay, when, when things are starting to get stripped away from them, just like it did when C-19 just broke out, okay, people was, people was getting jabbed, why? So they can keep their job, so they can keep up their, their lifestyle. So when, when, when death comes unto these people, they, they, they ain't gonna know how, how to react to it. And it says, uh, unto the man that has nothing to vex him, and, and that have prosperity in all things, yea, unto him that is yet able to receive me, O death acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy, and unto him whose strength faileth, that is not in the last age, and is vexed with all things. You see, so, you know, hey, if brothers gotta get put to death um, in the times of, of, in the times that we coming into, hey, we gonna be like, hey, fuck it, we already, we already in hell, we already don't got shit. You know, but the rest of this world, they're going to they, they gonna try to hold on to everything that they got, you know? Excuse me, sir. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Could you put the cigarette out for us, please? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, man. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Can you want to say something? You got it. It's uh, Isaiah 66, verse 4. It says, also, I will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when, when I called, none did answer. <clears throat> when I spake, they did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So the Lord's gonna bring, he's gonna bring more upon you that, that, that you can even bear. You know, you, uh, whatever your worst fears is, the Lord's gonna put that on you, you know, so you can be tormented. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even really know what your worst fear is, man. You know, when you try to think about, th th think about a lot of times how you got fears, right? Your fears were something that might have been established while you were young. You know what I'm saying? Like you probably climbed on a tree and realized you didn't like heights. You know, you probably went swimming and realized you didn't like being in a pool. But that's something that you, you sometimes your fears, you don't even know what a fear is until you encounter it. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord says he's going to choose your delusions. He's going to put your fears upon you, man. And see, this is why disobedience to the Heavenly Father, that's reward that people are going to receive from being disobedient. He's going to put gruesome fears upon the people. You know, he talks about, the scriptures talk about plagues and pestilence, all right? It talks about uh, attacks from animals, right? It talks about uh, men judging you uh, for death, sending you to captivity, you know, being in prison, that's a fear. Being locked up in a FEMA camp, you know? getting uh, Being put to death a certain way. You know, all of those are fears, man. So this is why you gotta you gotta serve the Lord if you don't, I don't even wanna know what my worst fear, my worst fear is the Lord taking his spirit off. Now that's my worst fear. But as far as fleshly, I don't know what my worst fear is, you see? But I, I pray the Lord never bring that to my doorstep. And so all you brothers and sisters as well. You know, we don't want the Lord to bring those fears to our doorstep because these people, their fears are going to come in. Their families are going to get jacked up. People's children are going to get devoured. Women are going to get ravished. All of these things are in the scriptures, man. So you got to understand the spirit that you're coming in, asking the Lord for a resolve and asking the Lord for a protection. All right. He talks about the protection from on high. Proverbs 18 and 10 says the righteous run into the strong, t uh, excuse me, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe, man. You see, so we're looking for safety from the Heavenly Father, right? Oh, I saw one of y'all raise your hand. Yeah, because like you said, man, you people don't know what they're truly afraid of, man. You people don't know what true fear is, what true terror is, man. The Lord created fear. The Lord created, what you can say, horror, right? You don't know what being afraid is, man. The Lord created that, right? And I'm going to pull this out. This is a uh, Second Corinthians, the yeah. fifth chapter, verse 11, and it reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest to the most high, and our trust are also made manifest in our consciousness, man. Us knowing 
in different ways y'all watching our soccer jack you up in different ways we want to you know uh, put judgment on you man because while we on our was edges right warning our people trying to persuade our people to come back to y'all watching our shop man this shit, this shit is real work, shit just the other day actually i didn't listen to just the other day a, a four-month-old baby now put the death by money that's the judgment of Yahweh Washington outside, man. There's so many different ways the Lord can jack you up, man. The beloved brother made a good point, man. Our biggest pressure should really be falling out the truth, man, not having that spirit of the Lord upon us. Because once the Lord's spirit is removed from you, everything else is like a domino. Man. Whatever you want to think about, whatever you want to add, whatever you want to imagine, that all comes with you. It says, are we getting any plague or plague or plague in mind? Or plague of the wickedness of the woman? in the mind, man, because one, again, we were talking yesterday, everything starts in the mind. So when you allow the wickedness of this world, all of these things that are about to happen to America, right, they're going to take these people over, right? We're talking about martial law breaking out in the streets. You're not being able to eat, not being able to drink, right? You have uproars in uh, Sri Lanka and Portugal just because the people are denied basic necessities, man. Right? And so when you go into, uh, can you give me uh, Isaiah 65 real quick, Papa Shot? When you go into uh, uh, Isaiah 65 and uh, I think 13, you know, when you go into the basic necessities you need for life, such as food and water, th those things are about to be removed from people, right? You had, uh, uh, I, I was listening to another thing about Bill Gates, right? And how he's, of course, he's, of course, brother's been talking about this, but he's paying farmers. He said, I will give you a loan or pay, uh, or you can retire from farming if you uh, get rid of all your crops, if you burn your farmland, right? So they're, they're knowledgeably trying to destroy your food source, right? They're knowledgeably trying to, do, to tank your water source, right? So all of these, pri all, really eating and drinking are privileges, huh. right? You, you, the Lord says now we're going to eat every day, right? Because that's, that, those are the things that we require, like food and raiment, there would be content. But those are privileges, man, to eat. Right, and the people are about to see in America they take it for granted, right? But we're about to see in the times to come. It says a man shall uh, have no pity upon his neighbor for a lack of bread, man. But uh, can you get that for me, brother? Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Right, he says, My servant shall eat. So the people that truly believe in the Bible, that have the way it was written, he said, They're going to eat. And why would he say, But ye shall be hungry? And he's talking about all the non-believers and the heathen nations. Those people are going to be hungry in the times to come in America. Go ahead. Behold, my servants shall drink, mm -hmm. but ye shall be thirsty. Right, his servants are going to drink, but ye shall be thirsty. But see, with the false understanding that came with Christianity, they told you if you just call on the sweet name of Jesus and confess with your mouth that he rose from the dead, you shall be saved. That's not what the Bible says, man. What are you saved from? Right, what are you saved from? You have to realize there's more to it. You, the, the scriptures say, uh, I will show you my faith by my works, man. You have to show the Heavenly Father that you love him. You have to show the Heavenly Father that he's near and dear unto you. You got to keep his commandments. You got to do the things that he asks to do in the Bible. And if you don't do them, you're going to end up hungry and thirsty in the times of some soon come to, to haunt America. Go ahead. Behold, my servant shall rejoice. But ye shall be ashamed. That's right. My servants shall rejoice, but these people are going to be ashamed. And why are they going to be ashamed? Because they've had men like us in every major city and country around the world telling them that they have to repent and change their ways. But the time is going to come where he's going to remove his men from these streets. And people are going to be hungry. People are going to be thirsty. And people are going to be ashamed. And those are three terrible conditions to be in. Go ahead, brother. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart. But ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. That's right. We're going to sing for uh, joy of heart. We're going to be giving praise to the Heavenly Father for giving us food. We're going to be giving praise to the Heavenly Father for giving us a joyous spirit while the rest of the world is in mourning. We're going to be giving praise to the Heavenly Father because we're going to be drinking uh, Fiji in the finest spring waters while these people are trying to tap up mud water, man. You know, eat, eating and drinking the most. People are going to be eating out of trashes. People are going to be eating mice, eating squirrel, anything they can get their hands on, man. But the Lord is going to, he, he, the Lord gave us so much a beautiful spirit to understand this book that he's going to give us righteous foods, man. You want to understand that the Lord ain't going to, he might, he might send a pig your way to see what you're going to do. But may that spirit stay upon you to not, to not harm that, man, and not touch that. You got it, brother. Brother put a precept on the comment board. Uh, GMS and the Truth for Orlando. Uh, Shalom, uh, I read this one, Ezekiel 5 and, uh. 
Verse 16, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for the destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. That's right. He said, I will send those evil arrows of famine upon you, right? And when you get hit with an arrow of anything, right? When an arrow hits you, it's going to hurt. And the Lord said, I'm going to send upon you evil arrows of famine. And evil really goes in a bad time. So being famished, you're not able to eat, not in the special if you got a family. Right? You got little children, you got a woman, and you can't you can't provide for them. That's a terrible position to be in. So, uh, 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 oh, he said, I shall break your staff of bread. Right? The staff of bread, what these people lean on, right? Your, your, all these food departments, Walmarts, your, your uh, uh, Trader Joe's, your Whole Foods. The Lord's going to take all that away. And Americans don't know how to do anything for themselves. We don't know how to be self-sufficient. And nobody's, if you barely got people growing gardens of their own and providing their own food or getting their own water source, you don't have people doing that anymore. They depend on this system, right, and the powers above this system to provide their every need, man. All right? So the, the Lord is going to make it a very terrible time in the times to come, man. We're in the times of, uh, of uh, weak men right now, man. Not in the time of struggle, not in the time of wisdom and understanding, but the Lord says this truth is going to prevail and it's going to take over the whole earth, man. Uh, to borrow the other side. This is Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So the six troubles going back into where the plague, uh, when, when you have about Shinnah Shah to send the plague upon this world. All right, and the seventh, and the seventh is, is that ultimate uh, destruction. All right, verse 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt lie, yeah. neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You see, because the Lord said his servants gonna eat, you know, and the Lord said you're not unrighteous, you get your work and labor of love. You see, and that's why it's important now to be spiritually prepping. You see, why the rest of this world, okay, they're carnally prepping, okay, they're, they're um, stocking up on guns you know even if you got a garden hey that, that's that garden that you got in the back of your crib is still not gonna save you yeah. you know your neighbor's gonna come rip that up yeah. <laughs> I, I came to the point of thought that because you come across different videos on youtube when you see people are are, are finally prepping like with guns and things of those sort at some point you gotta you gotta accept the fact that you're gonna perish point blank period you know you might sustain day one might last day too, but you're going to perish. Point blank period, someone's going to overtake you with more guns, more bullets, more power, more strength, more more people behind them. That's going to be the end of it. Yeah, what do they say? They, and I'm sorry, brother, I know I'm got y'all coming. They say, they, people in the world say, I got enough food to last me for two and a half years, right? They say stuff like that. Well, Lord, what, what, what if, what if uh, Jacob's trouble last three years? What are you going to do in the, in the last six months? It's over for you. So you need the Heavenly Father and His Son for protection because no matter... No matter how much money you got stored up, how much food you got stored up, how many guns you have stored up, it says the name of the Lord is how we gonna uh, put down our enemies, man. That's how we gonna do it through the name of the Lord, man. But uh, y'all design, you got it, brother. Oh, no, I'm okay, uh, you want Second oh. Ezra chapter seven, verse thirty-four. But judgment only shall remain. Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. So back up what you were saying, it said the truth shall stand. Like it says in Isaiah the thirty-third chapter six, verse it says wisdom and knowledge. It's going to be the stability of that time, man. All right? And that's the time we're coming into. So the truth is going to stand in the days we're coming into. Yeah. This is uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse uh, 73. Then shall they know who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as far as gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. That's right. Those days of trouble are at hand, but the Lord said, I will deliver you from the same. You're going to know who is chosen and how glorious it is to be one of the Heavenly Father's chosen, man. How glorious it is, man. And with us, uh, oh, when the saints come marching in, man, oh, I want to be of that number, man. Right? That's, that's, a, a great, that's the greatest thing you can be on this, in this side, on this, in this world, man. A part of the Lord's number, man. Right? So we are hoping and praying that we're those men that the Heavenly Father has put his spirit upon in these last days to be chosen because the scriptures say many are called but few are chosen, man. So we're praying that we're chosen by doing his work, by uh, spreading the gospel. The scriptures say be not ashamed of the gospel, man. Right? By coming out here willingly showing our faces, letting the world know the true state of belief and what mindset you ought to believe and be in in these last days, man. 
You know? Because the days of trouble are ahead. Your brother's got it. Uh, Psalm 91, starting at verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I heard you. I heard you. I don't know where it's all coming from, but I didn't start this fucking mess. Hey, hey, where you from, man? Okay, let me get this scripture that you can go. Okay, I need to kill him. Okay, yeah, one more scripture that you can go. Oh, yeah, I agree. Hey, read that scripture. Sirach Ecclesiastes 26 and 28. It says, There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry, a man of war that suffereth poverty. Sirach uh, Ecclesiastes 26, 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry, a man of war that suffereth poverty. It says a man, uh, something that grieves your heart is a man of war that suffered poverty, man. You know, so but they send, they send people to wars and you come back and then it's like, you know, they, they give you a little, a little VA money sometimes. And, a little. You know, yeah, a little. A little. Yeah, yeah, keep going. He should have got more, my father. He wasn't a bad guy. He was an alcoholic. See, according to the Heavenly Father, according to the scriptures, a soldier is supposed to be one of the richest men in the land. 
Because when you when you he walk, was. when you walk to war, he was. And when you walk to war and you get spoiled, the the, the 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 king, you know, gives his portion to the heavenly father. Then the king gets his portion. Then the soldiers get their portion. And then whatever's left over is given unto the people for free. You know, my father had pop by flowers. Pop by flowers. <laughs> yeah. I was just scared of my father. He hit me in the chest once, and I deserved it. I deserved it. That's <laughs> right. Is he Irish? Yeah, Irish. Yeah. Scott? Oh, Sicily. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, um, a lot of what we talk about, you know, because the Bible is for, uh, it's really for a, 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 a group of people, right? I'm not sure. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Israelites before in the scriptures, right? The children of Israel that were delivered with Moses. Right. So those people are, those people that left with Moses, those are the children of God to this very day. And so, but our people were scattered everywhere due to migration, curses, fleeing from curses. You got too much shit going on. You gotta help them. My father, when he got the check, oh, we got the check. It was what the hell my mother got, whatever. Jesus is Lord. There you go. That's what we were talking about. God said Jesus is Lord, but that guy not serving the Let me ask you a question. That's a quote from Robert Kennedy. What do you think about that? See, that's the thing, because this world has told us what the you Messiah is. Start started. listening to some of this stuff. That's right. That's right. They should. And people's panties are on too tight. See? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
show unto his servants things which must come to pass. Right, so this is the revelation of the Messiah. So this the revelation needs to reveal. So one of the things they're about to reveal is how the image, the, the Messiah, really looks. Go ahead. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. Right. And girt about the path with a golden girdle. Right. So it says, the Son of Man, who is the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, say he had on a garment like this down to his foot. Right? And he had a he had a golden girdle, a war belt on. Okay, go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Right. So his head and his hairs, right, his hair and his beard were white like wool. Alright, so this is describing uh the, what the Messiah looks like. Alright, he has white, white hair and woolly in texture. Go ahead. As white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right, his eyes were as a flame of fire because he, he drank wine, red wine, but also he's enraged for all of the things that's been happening in earth. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass. Okay. So when you go into that color brass, brass is a derivative of brown. So when you talk about the image of the Messiah, you see, so like Robert Robert Kennedy says, uh, Robert Kennedy said, uh, what do we find out that God is black and we have treated the black man as inferior? What then is our response? So if you figure out God and the Messiah are black men, so-called black men, right? And all the, the things that have happened to the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, what is your response to God when he returns for all of the things that have been happening to those people? You see, so that's Robert, what Robert Kennedy is saying. Robert Kennedy was really in the spirit when he said that because that's biblically true. The heavenly, who the world equally calls God, he's a so-called black man. And the Bible lets us know that, you know? Uh, uh, give me that, uh, that Daniel, Daniel 7 and 9. You got a question? Oh, actually, let me continue with this revelation. Go ahead. Revelation 1 and 15. Mm -hmm. And his feet like unto fine brass, yep. as if they burned in a furnace. Right, he says feet as unto fine brass as they burn in a furnace. That's dark brown. He said the Messiah has really dark brown skin, almost black, if you will. But go ahead. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So this is how you know the Messiah was a so-called black man, so-called Negro. He had woolly hair. He was he had very dark skin. And what they say, you black people are loud. You see, but he had the voice of many waters. So the Messiah, it would be a so-called Negro if he was walking on the street today. Um, go ahead uh, with the Daniel. You want to say All right. Something? Daniel 7 verse 9. So this is going to talk about the Heavenly Father. Go ahead. And it says, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days did sit. So when one title for the Heavenly Father is the Ancient of Days. It's because he has no beginning. He has no end. He's God. He's the ultimate creator, the ultimate being. So it, it said the Ancient of Days did sit. So we know that he has a body because it said the throne, right? He, has, he sits down on the throne. So now we know he has a body. Go ahead whose garment was white as snow. So he had a garment on, right? It was white as snow. He had a pure white garment on, go ahead. And the hair of his head like pure wool, right? So it described the Messiah having hair of pure wool. And this is, the, everybody knows, they said Jesus, they say Jesus is God's son. So, and there's a scripture in John that says that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So if you understand how the Messiah looks, now you understand how God looks. So who the world equally calls God and who the world equally calls Jesus are both so-called black men according to the Bible. But Christianity, they deceive people by making him look like a so-called white man with uh, hair just going down, long down the sides, with blue eyes. That's not how the Bible says it look. That's the exact opposite of what the Bible says about it. So this is why we have to take the time to read. Go ahead. And, a, and a lot of Sicilians, a lot of Sicilians and Italians go back to the 12 tribes of Israel yep. because we, we, we was once ruling over there. So a lot of Sicilians go back to the Israelites. So it's not about your skin color, you know? It's yeah. not about your skin color. You, you, can be, you can be still a descendant of the Israelites. Just like, uh, you know, the brother got me watching Sopranos. Those are our people. They right. might look like so-called white men, right. but how much flavor they got, how they act, the food they eat, how they act, and the way the things they do, those are our people. You see, because during the Holy Roman Empire, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were ruling over it, over it during that time. And the Sicilians, you know, the, even Sicilians and uh, the samurai, they say they have they, they were started from Negro blood. Look so at, those Sicilians, and it comes stems down through your father. Look so at those Sicilians are our people as well. 
What did you say, brother? Look at Al Pacino. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, what was it, uh, Joe Pesci. Uh, yep, yep. All, all those guys, man, those are Jakes. Those are Israelites, man. Yep, yep. You know, they have that salt. They have that flavor. Yep. You know, they just look like the other nation. They just look like so-called white men. Yep. And see, that, and, and if you ask typical Ital Italians, Sicilians, they'll say, we got no white people. So they will tell you. They know They know that they have uh, lighter skin, but they'll say, we, we're not white people. They'll tell you that. And that's because something in their membranes, in their mind, lets them know that they aren't like typical so-called white people. It's because they just don't understand that they descend from our people, you see? But the Lord the Lord gives us the full understanding of people in this Bible, right? But our people are scattered everywhere. That's why we might look like the other nations. But those are those are our people, those are Israelites. They just they just like light skinned black people. That's all they are. Light skinned so-called black people. Go ahead, brother. Deuteronomy twenty-eight. And 15, 15, but it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, the Lord, if we didn't follow the Lord's commandments, the Lord said that, that, that we would go into slavery. We will be subject to all these curses. And one of those curses is that our people will be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, let me go to that real quick. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee um, among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other end. I mean, either, uh, even unto the other. So uh, that's why that's why our people are scattered. You know, and that's why the scripture says, try the spirit by the spirit. You see, so you're going to have Israelite looking like Chinese people. You're going to have Israelite looking like so-called white people. You're going to have Israelite looking like so-called uh, Africans. Yep. That's why you got to know man's spirit, not just about how he looks. Scripture say, judge not by the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So we don't look at people and be like, oh, you a white man, so you, you are enemy. It's not that simple. You have to see a man's spirit to know where he's, where a man's spirit will reveal what nation he comes from. And, you know, and, and, and this is the beautiful part about the Heavenly Father and His Son. By the Lord calling us and us repenting and returning unto Him, we gain a higher level of understanding, a higher level of spirituality. So we take the weapons of our enemies, you know, the, deceptive, the, decep the, the deception that they use, and we use it as a weapon against them. When, you know, when it comes to the lineage of, of, of who, you, who you are, you are determined, your, lineage, your lineage is dependent on your father. There's signs to tell you that it is the man that determines the sex of the child. That's right. All right? Because the man, you know, has both chromosomes in them. The woman doesn't. All right? So you're, it's, it's, the man has the seed. What turns into the baby, the egg or the seed? Hey, and I, I want to say this. It's like, okay, why is all of this important, right? Uh, give me uh, Amos 3 and 1. Why is all of this? We talking about families and where you come from and who you are. Why is this important, right? It's because the Messiah, first off, it says the Messiah is sprang out of the tribe of Judah. When people read about who the world equally calls Jesus Christ and who he's coming back to save, he's not coming back to save the whole world. He's only coming back to save the elect of the nation of Israel. So that's why it's important when we talk about all these, uh, the, who, where you come from. Go ahead, brother. Amos chapter 3 verse 1 hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you O children of Israel against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt saying you only have I known of all the families of the earth that's right therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities right so the so-called blacks Hispanics and Native Americans those are the children of Israel according to the Bible so the Heavenly Father said because you are the only family, you are the only group of people on the earth that I've known, that I have a relationship with. Therefore, I'm going to judge you for all of the things that you're going through. So, when you like what you were saying about your father, and uh, he had a one-bedroom apartment, right? That, that, signs like that let me know that he has a potential to be an Israelite. Right? And if your father's an Israelite, that means you're an Israelite. So, your father was struggling, you know, all people struggling to make ends. You know, sometimes you're in a mean cottage in a small home, right? Uh, you know, the drinking problems because he's under the curses, he's going through things. All of those are small indicators to help us understand that he may have been an Israelite. And if you are an Israelite, you need to repent and return to your God because your God is not a so-called white man that they tell people in churches, right? He's the, and it's only one God. That's the thing. There's not, you know, you, you, you can't go to the, the Muslims and then go to the Christians, then go to the Buddhists. There's only one God. There's not, there's not 20 different gods out here. There's one God up there ruling heaven and earth, right? He says, I'm, I'm here alone. You know, he's there alone ruling, and his son is on the right-hand side. 
but he is ruling alone. His son, the only reason, the reason why the Messiah has not returned to the earth is for two reasons. One, because all of these prophecies are not fulfilled. And second, the second and most important reason is because the Heavenly Father has not given him the green light to come back. Those are the only two reasons. But as soon as these prophecies are fulfilled, he's on his way back to come and save the elect, to destroy America off the face of the earth, and all of our enemies uh, are going to be slaves, man. That's, That's right. what the Bible says. Right. Late, man, it's about two thirty. This is more important. I'm gonna add some things to it. The thing against me is when you guys are reading, I want to grow up. I read King James. That's what we got. Yeah, King James version. The interpretation is just. Yeah, the interpretation. How small is it? Well, we got brothers got different size Bibles. Oh, everybody. King James Version. King James Version. Yeah. Let me. Can you flip it to the page? Yes. Yeah. It's too small. Yeah. See, we got. But you got different size Bibles. You got different ones. You can find. You can. You can get. You can get ones with uh, large letters. I have a Bible on me. See, that's the thing. You got to read that Bible and understand. You got to talk. The scripture says, how can I learn? I know. I know. Yeah. My yeah. grandmother said, go and ask. Nice to. Yeah, that's a dick. Grandma. My grandma said. always wants to. Uh, that's a dick. Uh -huh. uh -huh. See, you don't, you don't need that. Honestly, man. Like, you know, the, okay, like, you know. It, I would never know. go to the chapel safety. Oh, you, you should. The scripture says, not going to go to the churches. Yeah. The, Bi the Bible tells you don't go in those churches, man. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You guys retired? I said, you ain't a fucking priest yet. They not. They not. They demons up in the church. <laughs> but all right, man. I told that son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I said, shame on you. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're supposed to help me. I was sleeping in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I did get some I did get some presents, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll give you things, but they they not give you what you need. They're not giving you the spiritual understanding. They only feed, they give people sandwiches and things like that, but they don't give you the truth. You know, but no, they give you know what? <laughs> I went there. <laughs> what you brought up about Alpha mm -hmm. I go there and say,
Understanding to fall away, and he that cleaves the harlots will become impure. So, 
know, you get too caught up in women, you get too caught up in wine or pleasures of this life, you can get caught away, man, you know, with the error of this world. It's going to say that uh, he that loves pleasure should not be rich. That's the paraphrase. Because you're too busy spending all your goods on pleasures. Man. I do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's important to have discipline. You know, because even if, even if you're not spending your money, spending your attention, spending your time, when you could be using it elsewhere to do something productive. Right. You know, that's why you're not going to end up being rich. You know? Right. I was rich. Being rich is okay. That's got to sound better. Because at least you can afford to go get something to eat. Yeah. Being rich is nice, but you got to have wisdom when you got riches. Yeah, you got to be smart. Yep, yep. You can't, you know, you can't show it. You can't get you can't it. You can't show it in this society. That's what we're saying. This society is flawed. In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be rich. all black guys and no well, But l listen, but your riches is spent. I know these my last 300 bucks. Look, 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 we've been out here for years giving out the words of the Heavenly Father. Infinite wisdom. <laughs> Infinite. The money just keeps going out because the heavenly, the, the words of the Heavenly Father is far beyond the riches of the world. You know, we, we have the ability to, 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 to uh, to, we're, we're fishers of men. You know, because we're never, we never run out of things to talk about. Guess what? Infinite. I don't think none of you guys can handle 24 hours with me. Later. Nice talk. All right, right, man. Hey, this is a, this is a spiritual fight. You're not gonna win the war. You're not gonna win the war. You can take my own fight. I'm not afraid to fight. No, a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual fight. No, it is. No. All right, he got it. He got some. You gotta go. No, stop. Leave me alone. Um, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of fucking living. Well, we not. No, you you should want to live. What? You should want to live. Yeah, right. You, you, you want to live for the Heavenly Father. If you're not living for the Heavenly Father, then you're going to die. I know you're not afraid of death, but you should be afraid of who is the, is the uh, who, 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 who brings life and death. That's who you should be afraid of. All right. All right, man. I don't have any fear. I have a fear for the Heavenly Father. I repent and keep the commandments, man. I got you. All right, man. Have a good one. Save trouble. You think so? I scare everybody. Watch out, because I'm going to get tiger. Savage Alright, bring the prees out, man. Bring the prees out. Enough of that shit. Book of Second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 31. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh. Yo, because it's locked. Yo, he saw the Hebrews. They're the ones that were wrong. I cried down. Of course, it starts with us. We went off. This is why we have to suffer. But, you know, Esau, Esau, oh, and the oh, of our, of our, uh, 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 so we can't learn these scriptures without the Holy Spirit and by men teaching us, man. Alright? But see, this is why the scriptures talk about our people being stricken with madness and astonishment of mind. You know, like, he he probably received a couple things we said, but he was really going on a tangent. You know, he was just, he was just saying random shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. He probably, everybody want to, that's the thing. When it comes, when it, you, you notice a lot of people that come up and listen and talk. They really just want to give their testimony. They want to tell what's going on in their lives. And it's cool. We're willing to listen, right? So that we can give you information and bounce off of that. But these, a lot of these people, he, like, he's low-key mad in his mind, man. And it might it might be an occurrence because he under the curses and been to war and all that kind of shit. But goddamn, bro. You know, like, you, you, it's only so much you can say to men like that. You can tell that he wasn't, he was no longer taking in the information. You see what I'm saying? So that's why... You, you gotta, eventually at some point, you gotta learn that cutoff point with people. You know what I'm saying? When they're not listening anymore, when they're just talking, and they're listening to respond, not listening to hear, and listen to learn. You see what I'm saying? So it's truly a blessing, though. You know, who, who, who are we, you know what I'm saying, for a man like that to, to give this testimony? You know, he has to feel something here in order for a man to, 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 to want to give this testimony, man. You know? At first, I thought he was an Edomite, but he, I looked I closely intent, he was listening to, I mean, looking at the pictures. And then I came up, you know, I was like, yeah, he probably a Jake, man. You know, by looking at him, you, you go, oh, that's a stone cold Edom. You know what I'm saying? But that's why you really got to take time with people sometimes. You know?
but the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, starting at the top, verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Yeah, that's what the, that Jacob was saying too, how he said he used to go to church. Right? But then when he left, he told the priest, shame on you, man. Shame on you. You're supposed to help me. Right? What does scripture say? Is not the shepherd supposed to feed the flock? What are these pastors doing today, man? They're only out here feeding themselves. Why do, why do Christian pastors have uh, private jets, mega churches, mega mansions, right? Where are they getting this money from? The people, man. They're taking the money from the flock and feeding themselves, man. All right? That's why the scripture says, woe unto them future preachers, man. Woe unto them false prophets. Woe unto them uh, so-called Christian and pastors and priests, man. Yup, the scriptures, the scriptures speak against churches. Yep, even, yep, yep. even, uh, it was an account with Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah said, you made my, my father's house a house of merchant yep, yep. because they're doing exactly the opposite of what's supposed to be going on in the church. Right here, this is a church, man. With one or more or two gathered in the name of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is in the mix. The church has got ATMs inside of it. So you gotta, you go to the church and use the ATM to tie and then they charge you an uh, interest fee. To, to tie your own money, man. Yeah. Places backward, the whole church is a house of merchandise. Our, our people have been confused. You know, they've been deceived, thinking that you know that they need carnal things. You know, of course we need the Lord is gonna He's gonna supply you the thing that you need, the basics. He's gonna supply you. You know, but what He really needed was the, was the bread of the heavenly Father. What's in the scripture here? This is uh, John six, verse uh, 30, 33. And it says, for the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All right, and this is what, you know, I, I wanted the brother to understand, man. You know, you, 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 need, you need the Heavenly Father to live. You know, you need the words of the uh, of Yahweh Shem Al Shah, man, because the more the more you serve the Lord, the more you keep uh, uh, His law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. The Lord is going to show you favor before men, even though you you're walking around here, and you don't have nothing. But based on your humility, based on the words that are coming out of your mouth, your wisdom, the Lord is going to through the Spirit allow these doors to open up to you. The Lord is going to allow and put it in, and put it in the minds of men to give you things, man, to give you food, to give you water. But you have to serve the heavenly, the heavenly Father sir, uh, first, because the, the, the Heavenly Father brings you value. You know, he doesn't, uh, he may not understand how valuable uh, the spirit of the Yahweh Shai is. I mean, you can walk into a room and change everything, just based off of you, based off of your spirit, how you deal with men. You know, how with the things that come out your mouth, man. The Lord can show you great favor, man. It's not money. You know. The words of the Heavenly Father is what you should be uh, 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 in need of. Because so Isaiah 55 and, one, and verse 1, Isaiah 55 and 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the water, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So if you're thirsty, you need to come to these waters. The living water for the outside I spoke of, man, the water that you drink of that you'll never thirst again. Which is these scriptures, man. Okay, because these scriptures are everlasting. You know, you can, like the brother was chopping it up earlier on the way here. The brother was saying, you can never really master the scriptures, you know, until we be changed. So we're never going thirsty because we can always come to this word and tap into it. And it says, buy without price, man. This word's supposed to be free. Verse 2, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hark and do say unto me and eat. Eat, eat ye that which is good, and let your heart and let your soul lock you, delight yourself in fatness. So, pretty much the saying, why are you spending your money? Why are you investing yourselves on things that don't profit, man? Things in this world. You know, Jacob spent all their money, their resources, their time on worldly things, but when it comes to this truth, they're not putting it in. You know, which is the, this is the true money, this is the true bread. Because the economic system, the economic system is getting ready to collapse. Once all, once all, the, all, all those dollars that you have in your bank account, once they mean nothing, what value do you have? You know, what, what value do you bring? You know, that's why we're, we're getting ready to find out, and our people are getting ready to find out. Most importantly, how how nothing that these so-called white men white men are. You know, they're nothing without their money. They're nothing without their sword. All right, 
Because our people, we, 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 we assume, our, our two thirds of our people equate their wealth with their, their not having knowledge, you know, and, and being so smart. Just because they have a lot of money, they don't mean that they're smart. They don't mean that they're wise. All right? The words of the Heavenly Father makes you wise. So when, 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 you ain't, when you don't have no more money during the time of Jacob's trouble, then we're going to see your true value. Everybody is going to see their true value. All right? Because now you ain't got no job to go, go to where you make six figures. That's going to be shut down. Yeah. Now what brings you value? Yeah. Because when you were in the world, you had the best cars, you had the best clothes, you went out every weekend, you drunk the, 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 the finest drinks. Now what? What do you bring now? Now you a loser. Now you're, now you, now you're, 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 you're worth nothing. Got a say in the world, man. What do you want unlaming it, man? Right. 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 If you was lame before it, you still lame with it, man. Right. And once they strip all the money, the, the, the sword from these temples, man, and you just got plain fucking needle mine with no for nothing without their substance. They, you don't see how 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 truly nothing they are, man. That's what's wrong. Ecclesiastes 10 and 31. He that is honored in poverty, how much more rich? And he that is dishonorable of riches, how much more of poverty? Right. Right. Hey, brother, what you're saying? And, and then we, we still going to see two-thirds of Jake uh, looking to Esau for, for, for answers. Mm -hmm. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to sit back and we're going to laugh. Yeah. We're going to laugh, man, because there's going to be two-thirds of our people still looking to Esau to lead them. Cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that, that's just because it's ingrained in them. See, they're not going to understand that. You know, because they're, not, they're, they're, they're still going to be looking, looking at things through carnal eyes. We're, we we look at things through through, through the spirit. Hey, and that's another reason why a lot of a lot of our people when these times become mental aren't gonna have aren't gonna know what to do, man. They're gonna be like a like a chicken without their head, man. They're gonna be going there like, oh shit, what do I do? Oh shit, Walmart shut down. Oh shit, I, I can't I can't do that. I can't do that. For us that have the knowledge and wisdom to understand, we gonna be stable in this time. We gonna have our say. We gonna know. All right, we already knew this was gonna happen. All right, let's do this. We move here. Let's do this. Let me not go here. Let me. So we're going to know how to flow or move in the spirit, man. These people ain't going to have that. Hey, the simple question, the simple answer that, you know, that, that really that you can give is, hey, man, repent and just wait on the Lord. They're going to be like, what? <laughs> that, that's your plan? <laughs> yeah. We're we going to wait on the Lord. Hey, that's Jake for you, man. Jake be wanting that the, the instant answer, instant uh, uh, gratification, right. instant results. They, they tell Jake, hey, repent and call on the Lord. Do, do what the Lord asks. They're going to be like, fuck, I need food right now. Right. That's the spirit that they're gonna be in. You feel me? They're gonna be a terrible case, man. Yet do they know, right? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord could set it up. You do that, you could fuck around, go go to the next room or the next house you're going into, you gonna find a crib full of food. Right. Instead, right? they like, man, forget you. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna go get it. Y'all who going with me? All bunch of niggas <laughs> roll with them. Man. All of a sudden, you chill. What, you don't see them for like a day. You don't see them for two days, and coming to find out they all got put to death. Man. Now, like you said, walk into a crib. Oh, food right there. Yep. Just <laughs> had to wait. Because yep. the, the dude that, that, that killed him, he probably was wounded, and he died of his wounds. Now you walking in there, well, the look, like the scriptures say, I go before you. You know what I'm yep. saying? The Lord go before you. He take care of everything because you, you waited for him. You had patience. Yep. And that's another reason why niggas won't have no fucking excuse, man. You won't have no excuse because you've been born time and time again. You had endless opportunities, but niggas still ain't there right. Uh, Syrac or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 13. Woe unto him. Well, I started at 13. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Uh, you know, so if you're not patiently waiting on the Lord, you know, if you're uh, looking for that, you know, for that microwave effect, you want the quick results. You know, especially in a time of trouble, you know, you, you can't eat. You know, then you start bugging out, going crazy, doing 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 things that's out of your character, you know, that's gonna lead to your destruction. Because it's, it's gonna be lawlessness out in the streets. You know, so you do something if you do something to offend somebody in a time of trouble, you know, that, that, that could be off off with your head. It's Matthew six and nineteen. Lay not for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust do corrupt. And with these break from the steel. See, because these, these uh, carnal riches, or, or these carnal riches now, they ain't gonna be able to profit you when shit hit the fan. Okay, because the dollar is, is depreciating the value each and every day. The dollar ain't gonna, ain't gonna mean nothing. Your gold and your silver, that's not gonna deliver you. 
It says, Rich is profit not a day of wrath. Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through your steel. You see, and, and no matter what happens, Esau can, can take you to a concentration camp, he get cast into prison, and no, Esau can beat you, hey, but he can't, he can't take away this truth from you. The only, only man who can is, is, is Yahweh Shadrach Shah, and that's why we pray to take Yahweh Shadrach Shah to take out the Holy Spirit away from us. But this, this truth is what's going to profit you in the time of, uh, of, of taking trouble, man. Okay, wisdom, knowledge is going to keep you safe. Okay, it, it's going to, it's going to, the scripture says in 2nd Ezra, uh, the 16th chapter, that, uh, I start at verse 70 and it reads, For there shall be in every place and, and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear you how about you not shine. Because hey, Esau, he's going to roll. Say so he's going to come down with that great wrath because he knows that he has for a short time. So Esau, he's going to roll, he gonna roll on, 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 on all of Israel. Okay? Because uh, verse 71, They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So Esau, he gonna he gonna be like a madman, all right. And, and and what's gonna keep us what's gonna keep us calm? What's gonna keep us collected is is this truth, okay? It's just like in the sports, you play you you fighting in boxing, and you you gotta know how to uh, keep your composure. You can't be throwing haymakers, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta every count, every uh, punch counts, all right. And it says verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. See, and when this time comes, people are, people are gonna be bugging out, you know, because they they, they too attached with, with the things of this world, man. You know, and I don't give go ahead and break into my house. It's, it's I don't give a fuck about it anyway. You know, break uh take my car. I don't care. The Lord gonna promise me a chariot in the kingdom, man. You know, uh verse 73, then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold, as gold in the fire. And one thing about gold, it gotta go through that purification process, man. All right, the scripture says, uh, Sight Right 2 and uh, 5. Uh, yeah. I'm out, bro. Uh, I don't know if I get it. 2 and 5. Yeah, but we. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we're trying to be found acceptable, but we gotta, we got to endure that fire. Okay, the scripture says, you'll be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So, hey, you don't know how long we're in the lower state already. You know what I'm saying? But in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, you, get, you might get cast into prison. But the Lord says, you know, be faithful, all right? You might have tribulation 10 days. It goes back to a number of completion. It might be two weeks. It might be a month, okay? But going back to uh, 2nd Ezra 16 and 74, Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. And this is what comfort us. You know, we know that we got to go through this fire. We know that we got to go through the hour of temptation. All right, Acts 14 and 22. Through many trials and tribulations shall we enter into the kingdom. But the only way we're going to get through this is through uh, is through Yahweh Shanao Shai and, and being patient and waiting. All right. All right, 76. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord. You know, so the Lord is going to be our God. You know, the Lord is going to going to direct our stuff. You know, you can't be uh, building out a bug out plan. Oh, shit hit the fan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No. Hey, the Lord is going to direct our stuff. You know, you like, like you watch the movie, uh, the TV show, The Walking Dead. Hey, uh, Rick, you know, he sleep sometimes. Then he wake up and be like, hey, let's go. Let's go. You know, um, uh, let's get up out of here. That's how, that's how the Lord going to be. You know, you might be in the midst of your sleep. You know, the spirit wake you up and be like, hey, hey, let's move. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord will direct our steps, man. That's right. This is uh, Psalm 144, verse 7. Send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strength. So that's what the Lord will do. But the sister said, he saw us out coming like a flood. You know, so when all hell breaking loose, you know, the Lord is going to deliver his elect. He has care uh, for his elect. You know, in the hand of strength, so we in the hand. You know, of our enemies, man. Yeah. You know, Esau, you know, that's, that's, that's a strange show. Yep, man. You know, the difference between us, Lord, will we be at that number compared to the rest of the world is they, it's going to it's going to take, it's going to overtake them as a thief. So, you know, if you if you're in a fight and somebody just, if somebody walk up to you and just hit you 
hey, most likely you're gonna get knocked out because you're not expecting it. But we're we already expecting we already expecting it. So you know we're gonna be in defense mode. You know when these times come. I got a precept. I, uh. pre I, I, I hope this goes with it. But this is a uh, Luke six verse twenty seven, and it says, "What I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you." And it says, "Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you." And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again, man. So we're going to go through those kind of things, man. We're going to go through those kind of tribulations, man. You're going to get your house robbed, all right? You're going to get robbed going from city to city or whatever. You know, if they want what's on you, let them have it. It's all good. All right? The Most High is going to take care of you, man. How much of is going to take care of you, man? You know, we, we might get jumped. You know, we might get beat up. That's cool. You know, how much of is going to take care of us? All right? He's going to fight for us. And these are the things that we're going to go through, man. These are why, this is why we, we take heed of the words of the Scripture. This, this is why it's written. All right? The Lord is guiding us through the Spirit, man. He's already telling us what we're getting ready to go uh, 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 to experience, man. You know, that was a, that was uh, uh, something that even my father in the world that he told me, man. If they want it, man, let them have it. You know, if they want, if they if they got a gun up to you, man, and they want your chain or they, whatever whatever you have, let them have it. That's a part of uh, agreeing with that adversary quickly. quickly. You know, because it ain't just it's not just limited to the cops. It comes to agree with the adversary quickly. No. Lord will the Lord don't ever put you in a circumstance like that, but, you know, that's just wisdom, man, you know? Hey, Paul went through all those perils, you know? Oh, well, we're, we're going to have our fair share of tribulation. You know, we're going to go through a lot of those things. The Lord, is he's trying us, man. He's putting us through the fire. We're going to experience those things, man. We might walk into a, 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 a particular city full of wolves, you know what I'm saying, full of demons, man. Demonic energy, but we're gonna we're gonna have to be humble in the spirit. We're gonna have to pray into the heavenly Father to deliver us through that, man. Cause they're gonna be wanting to know who, who, where you at, who you, who are you, where you from. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna be looking at the stuff that you got. They're gonna want it. Because hey, when you uh, go into uh, like Psalms the third chapter, it talks about uh, King David being surrounded by like thousands of his enemies, man. Uh, you know, stuff like that's gonna happen. You know, but when uh, you know the scriptures say, uh, "Touch not my prophets." Touch my not anointed and do my prophets no harm. You see, that's written in the Bible, man. But don't be surprised that sometimes men are, are going to get hands put on them by police officers and things like that. Shit. You know, I even had a dream before. Some police officers grabbed me up and was uh, thrusting their guns into my ribs and shit, you know. But I told all the asses that the Lord was going to put them to death, too. You see what I'm saying? You know, yelling at you. I'm going to so put y'all to death. You see what I'm saying? So it's like... They, things like that are going to happen, but you got to put your faith in the Lord, man, because, you know, that's what it says, I, I will have not that you take out, out of the earth, that you keep it from the evil. But that don't mean some kind of a little afflictions might not happen with your flesh. But that's why you got to pray to the Lord, man. And plus, not that, sometimes the Lord will have men put their hands on you just so he can judge them. You see what I'm saying? He, the Lord needed that justification to truly jack their ass up. So now, you know, he, he, police officer, sh shut you in the ribs with a gun. Hey, it's over for his ass, man. Lord gonna take him out, man. Lord willing we those men. You know what I'm saying? So, even stuff like that, you know. Sometimes things happen to brothers in the faith, and you be like, man, like, why did this happen to me? You know, that uh, somebody can get that uh, uh, impeder to uh, fiery trial. You know, at the end of the day, I think it's... Uh, like first Peter five and eight or something like that could be wrong, but um, you know, at the end of the day, things like that are going to happen. But you gotta have, you gotta put your faith in your how about Shemel Shai. That's how you're gonna be sustained. I could be wrong. First Peter four and seven. One and seven. Okay. First Peter four and twelve. Four and twelve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, four yep, and yeah. Four and twelve. I don't know what I was thinking. About. This is uh, First Peter four and twelve. Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, mm -hmm. as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of a Mashiach suffering, that when his glory shall shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see that? So, hey, don't brother, don't think of no strange thing. When you're getting persecuted, the scriptures say uh, a servant is not greater than his Lord. You know, so don't think it's strange if something bad or something weird happened to you, man. At the end of the day, Yahweh Shah went through it. Look what they did to hey, me and the brother Yawanathan was talking about that. You know, 
When you, it happened to Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, of you, of you, that's, uh, brothers, if you ever need a, a, a foothold, right, to gain, get your uh, get your wits and to get your mind right, think about Yahweh Shah and what he went through, right? You com We can't compare our lives to what the Lord went through. But you be like, man, shit, Yahweh Shah did this, Yahweh Shah did that. So what, what, what happened to me is little, it's light. Yahweh Shah was able to bear it. You know, so don't think it's strange because as much as we were suffer, we suffer now with Yahweh Shai, right? We're gonna be glorified with them too. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So don't think it's something strange when men come down and men, you know, and Lord willing, don't no random man ever put hands on y'all brothers. And random things like that, man. We don't want nothing like that to happen. But sometimes the Lord gotta jack you, judge you for something that you might have done in your past life, man. Maybe you was sticking people up. Maybe you were robbing people or harming people. You see what I'm saying? So maybe the Lord, like, all right, I'm going to just do it one time. We got to get it out the way. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to keep them. I'm not going to let nothing terrible happen to them. You know what I'm saying? But you got to have faith in the Lord. That's right. Also, you got it, bro. I was going to say, the scripture says that he was more and more than any other guy. So that's their comfort to me. You know, he ain't going to get the same treatment as Yahweh shot. Dude. That's right. That's right. And that's that's why he's our example. He's the example put forth for us because, when you, like we always say, like, if you think you've been in the truth long enough, I mean, you think you've been in the truth a long time. Well, think about the apostles. Right. And then you go, all right, I, I know I can make it another day. I know I can do another year. I know I can do another two years. You know what I'm saying? Think about the apostles. And that's that'll give you the fuel you need to keep running, to keep going, man. It says run to run the, uh, the prize of your house shot, man. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you use the great men before us as examples, and you'll be better off, man. You, your, your fiery trial don't seem quite as fiery. You know, at the end of the day, every man's hell is his own hell. But when you think about Yahweh Shah, you're like, hey, what they you say in the world? What would Jesus do? Hey, what would Yahweh Shah do? Right. Think about Yahweh Shah. Like, how, how would he react? Right. You know? And, and, and don't, don't think it's out of the realm because a possibility. You got to understand, man. This is why we, we, we quote the scripture where it, it pleased the Most High. It pleased the Heavenly Father to rule his son. Don't think that you're going to receive anything uh, 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 less, man. Look, look at the Heavenly Father done to his son, man. So if you think he ain't going to have you catch hell, and, and get your behind whoop. Look what he did to his son, man. He's showing you how, how far he's willing to go, man. And I'm sorry, I need to say this, brothers. Uh, this thing came out on online the other day. They said, why should we care about God looking into his own son? And that was some wicked, vile shit what they said, man. You got to understand, there's a separation between uh, a man that's just forsaking his son and just jacking him up, beating him up for no apparent reason. The Messiah was sent, as, Yahweh Shai was sent as a sacrifice for our sins. Right. The reason why the Lord got messed up the way he did was because we messed up. So he was so brave a man, so austere, so uh, a beautiful spirit that he was willing to sacrifice his life for for us, man. So that, that's what people don't understand. It ain't like uh, Yahweh was like, yeah, Yahweh Shai don't care about just going to the dogs. It wasn't that type of situation. He made a sacrifice for the children of Israel for all of the, the wickedness that we committed, man. That's when you got to understand the scripture. So I just wanted to get that out, but uh, you got something, brother? Okay. okay. And this is Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, meaning we're being constantly watched by the angels, those, those clouds of witnesses. It says, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. So like the brother said, if you get tired, think about our Lord Yahweh Shai. Think about what he went through, man. You know, consider him if you get weary to faint in your mind. Yeah, you have a shine as the standard. That's right. And, and really, it's, um, in second half, we talk about that straight gate, you know. But um, yeah, this is um, Revelation 3 and 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that 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 the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eyesight that they may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's right, man. Hold on. Everything that was just said was 
and spiritual too. All right, that white linen, which is talking about this, this wisdom, this true wisdom is our garments. You know, it clothes us from the shame of our sin and our wickedness, man. You know, because when you go off, it's like you're naked before the Heavenly Father, man. All right, and how you cover yourselves up is through this word, okay? And it says the eye salve, which is basically like spiritual eye drops, if you will, or spiritual glasses. That's the Lord anointing your eyes to see in the spirit, to see things in the spirit, man. You know, and then it says gold tried in the fire that we may be rich. That's our, that's, uh, that's our faith. That's us. You know, we're, where is that gold trying to fire, Lord willing? And then we're going to be rich at the appearing of Yahweh Shamashiach, man. You know, right. scripture say the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold, right. okay, which is uh, unto uh, 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 praise at the appearing of the Lord. We're for paraphrasing. Right? That's right. You know, so we got to be, we got to be zealous and, and chast, uh, and the Lord said, whom he loves, he chastens. That says the father, his son, right? And it says, be zealous and repent. You know, in this truth, you got to have zeal. You know, it takes zeal to do the work. It takes zeal to be brotherly. It takes zeal to serve Yahweh with fear and trembling. But that's the point. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Hey, forevermore, he, he's never going. He's never going to perish again. All right. You know, he he already uh, received his uh, his punishment. You know, so when he comes back the second time, you know he he coming back. You know, with that angelic body. All right. You know, coming to do damage. He already he already uh, he already went through the bad. You know, so now the now the now the Lord blessed him with a new body. All right, he's he's up in this. Uh, he's up with the heavenly Father. You know, so Yahusha, he's winning right now. Yo, that's why I asked the fifth chapter it says he's uh, exalted on the right hand to be a prince and a savior. Right. Yeah. People just act like the most I just put Yahusha on that cross and then give him no reward for it. No they just act like that was it. Get him away. But they don't understand everything Yahusha is getting ready to inherit. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's getting ready to inherit the whole creation. And, right. And that's how they look at us. They don't understand what we about to inherit. Don't put the yard on the Come. He was accounted his life madness. Come. This ended he was out on Yo. Even when you go into that word exalt, when you exalt, that means you put above. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what the Heavenly Father is doing with Yahweh Shah. Right. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose. We understand that ultimately it was a, 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 a torturous sacrifice that Yahweh had to make when uh, sacrificing Yahweh We understand that Yahweh Shai loves his father. We understand that he was sent to his father's work. So all things will work according to good for, for the purpose, for his purpose man. All right. And just like for the righteous, all things work for good. The Lord can turn a good thing into evil for a wicked person. All right. This is a Sirach Ecclesiasticus. Uh, 39, starting at verse 27, it says, actually, you start at 25. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. Let's get to the verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. So Yahweh Shemoshah knows how to make a bad situation a good one for his elect, and a, and a good situation to a bad one for the wicked, man. And that's the balance of the Lord. What is Lord? So I was gonna say, uh, everything works out good. You know, uh, yep. Those that love them. Yeah. They, see, because they're on balance with it. They don't understand that the most I. <laughs> hey, and that's how sudden that judgment will be, man. Right? But nonetheless, they don't understand the Lord is balanced. He'll bless you and he'll curse you too. Right. Okay. You know, if you're being righteous, you'll inherit the blessing. You're being wicked, you're gonna inherit the curse. Right? That's it. Like the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is gonna be a glorious thing for us. For everybody else, it's gonna be a horrible thing, man. It's gonna reverse our captivity. It's gonna put the other nations in captivity. It's gonna be a lot of death in that day, man. But it's gonna be a lot of salvation in that day as well, man. So, uh, so I wanted to get that second Samuel touching back on that topic of his lost suffering, man. You want me to read it for you all? Second Samuel chapter 16. God, I got you. Verse 11. Start at verse 11. And David, Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. And David said to Abishai. And to all his servants, behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, he gave my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Lucky. See, David's own son wanted to kill him. So if David's own son wanted to kill him, how much more than this, what this Benjamite wants to do it, right? Let him alone, let him curse, for the Lord has done everything that happens on earth is the will of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. So if somebody was cursing out King David, it's because the Lord made him do it, man. And King David understood this, man. King David understood to uh, to take persecution, man. You can read all the all Psalms about how he dealt with persecution, man. And he still glory the Lord throughout his persecution. All right, continue on. Verse 12, it may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will require Salak, and the Lord will requite me good for his curse in this day. The Lord will look upon our affliction and requite us good for our affliction. All right? Requite needs to pay you back. So if you're going through it, the scripture said that the Lord will pay you back for a slot you. Requite me good for his curse this day. Yeah, we're under the curses now, but we're going to be requited blessings when these curses are reversed, man. We're we'll putting it back in our, in our, our righteous place, man. We're starting with our, our, the renewal of our mind, man. Once we get back in order, then everything else will get back in order, right? Everything in our, on earth will be getting back in order. So the book of Psalms says the whole, uh, the whole earth is out of course, man. The whole creation is out of course, man. This place has to be good. Change, man. A change has to come, man. That's why the Lord said he's going to turn Babylon right side up. This place is really like, it's really like, it's just a sword, right? You pick up the sword, open the front page, right? You read it like how it's supposed to be read. Well, Esau got it upside down, starting from the back page. 
That's how this world, the world is, man. You know, that's why the Lord's gonna turn it right side up. He's saying it's esteemed as the potter's clay. Oh, uh, what is that? Second Ezra, the f fourth yeah. chapter, where it speaks about the evil sown being turned right. upside. Exactly. That, so, uh, go ahead. No, the evil being sown is Babylon the Great. Right. So in order for our kingdom to come, this place has to run its course, so to speak. Man. That's right. Matter of fact, somebody get that second address, the fourth chapter. Right second address, oh, you got it already? You got it, go ahead. Second address, chapter four, verse 30. For the great of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Of course. And how much ungodliness have they brought up, up until this time? And how much shall they bring yet forth until the time of threshing trouble? All right. <laughs> second address, chapter four, verse 30. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness hath they brought up unto this time? And how much shall they yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? All right, so ever since Adam, you know, the soul of evil has been sowed. Evil has been sowed, man. And ever since Adam, evil just goes up and up. Second Edges 429. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside oh. down, and if the place where the evil sown not pass away, then cannot it come that is that is sown with good. That's right. So like the brother Adamon was saying, Babylon the Great has to be destroyed in order for our kingdom to be established. Because that evil that's being sown is Babylon the Great. Right, because if this place is established, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven can't be established at the same time as Babylon, man. You can't have evil and righteousness ruling at the same time. It's impossible, man. Right. One has to go. Right. That's why it says kingdom dwell of righteousness. There's nothing righteous in this kingdom, man. Especially dealing with Esau, Edom, because he's an unjust ruler. You know, Sirach, the 10th chapter goes into the how a wise, a wise judge will instruct this people, man. And you see what's going on around the world, man. That's why it says the whole creation groaneth, or uh, the whole creation groaneth, even the trees. Isaiah the 13th chapter says the tree is going to be at rest when this man is taken out of power, man. Because Esau, Edom, has no, con him controlling, he does everything with wickedness, man. You know, putting, uh, you got cement, you know, you got trees and it, it's cement under it. That's not how it's supposed to be, you know. And even back in ancient Rome, man, I did a lesson on this, that, uh, they had a, they had a system of, how they mix human blood with cement to make it stronger, make it more weatherproof. Right? And they got a patent today in America on how they mix blood with cement. So the, the building that, uh, that you see in the, the concrete on the floor, that's being mixed with human blood, man. Yup. In, in, in Haiti, I, mean, I forgot which building. Cancel. Cancel. That's in Cafe. Cancel. 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 Uh, uh, slave owners, plantation owners that was over there when they were, you know, overthrowing them and killing them. They took their blood and, and built a, a castle there with their blood. That's right, man. Who's doing that wickedness? Esau, Edom. It tells you in the book of uh, the book of first or you no know, second Thessalonians, maybe the first. It speaks about how that man of sin being revealed, man, in the times we in that man of sin being Esau, Edom, man. We're discovering. You know, all the wicked acts Esau, Edom has been doing, man. This happened through 2 and 12. Woe, woe unto him that buildeth a town with blood. And that's how this place has been established. You know, literally, off the blood and backs of, of the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And, and that's why this, this place is going to be, that's why this place is going to be utterly destroyed. Never be inhabited it again. All right, it says, uh, and establish a city by iniquity. See, and that's that's all that this man know is rape, robbery, and murder. That's that's all he done throughout his his existence of rulership, rape, rob, and murder. You know, and that's why that's why it, it, it could be no place, it could be no place of uh, repentance for Esau. It could be no, you know, uh, after a thousand years, you know, you get to go back to to the pockets mountain. No, it ain't gonna be none of that. You gonna be you gonna be gathered together in, in, in um, with fire, as it says in, in the book of Obadiah. That's right. Yeah, this is Numbers 35th chapter, verse 33, and it reads, So you shall, this is a lot of so, Numbers 35, verse 33, it reads, So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood is the father of the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but 
by the by the blood of him that shed it. And you know, like brother is saying, man, this place is is the far way without blood, man, with the blood of the so-called uh, blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And like I said, the land can't be cleansed except by the blood of them that shed it, man. Right? That's why this place has to be destroyed, man. That's the only way that this this place is gonna be truly cleansed, man. Says the name of the one, woe unto the bloody city. Destruction. Destruction has to come to the world. You can read that piece up again. Uh, this Habakkuk 2 and 12, woe unto him that built a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. Con, and I remember back in the world, I went to visit a school in Kansas and I was getting taught up some history. The state of Kansas is also known as Bleeding Kansas, man, because under that whole state, it's known to have several so called Native Americans and blacks under there, man. And a little bit of brief history is caught between pro slavery and anti slavery Africans in control of military of Kansas and the doctrine of popular sovereignty, man. So, woe to those people, man. This whole nation has slaves upon them, man. In the buildings, in the soil, in the water. You even got, uh, you got blood under the sea. You got statues and castles of under the sea of people who, uh, down there and down. The whole earth you want man. You got oil spills, you got uh, these big companies, who, um, they, they, they got fish, they go and they bring their ocean trawls on coral reefs which takes millions of years to develop and thrive. They, they completely destroying those things, which uh, which is a food chain for the whole sea, you know? You got you got dumping and waste management, that, 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 that throw away the trash in the sea, chemtrails, chopping down trees day in and day out just for the sake of a building. It's still wicked, it's so wicked, so not so right, man. Like, it's so bloodthirsty, but after all that killing, they still want more, man. That's right. I got a precept. It's Obadiah 1 and 15. For the day of Yahweh is upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Right. See, hey, and, and not just Esau, Edom, all the other nations don't have, don't have, to, uh, don't have to pay for what they've been doing. All right, but hey, particularly Esau Edom, hey, because his ass, hey, he said he, uh, he, he, like basically he beat, he, he, uh, he beat us more than, 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 than we, than we deserve. You know, uh, roughly paraphrasing that. Ford it said, our yeah, he poured our affliction, affliction. Right. All right, but it says, uh, for the day of the Lord is near upon all heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Hey, as the book of Psalms, it says, all the nations, are coming together, you know, to figuring out ways to destroy us. So, hey, uh, like, like they say, um, the other nations, y'all are a accessory uh, to, to, to the crime. Yeah. Yeah. And it says 16, for as ye have drunken upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. All right, hey, because we had to drink in that cup of slavery. Hey, so. You know, other nations, y'all got to drink that cup of slavery, too. You know, hey, especially uh, Moab, you know, the brother sent in the chat yesterday, they had uh, vacuum seal, uh, um, Moab, vacuum seal, season up the cat. You know, and, and who they feeding that to? They feeding that to Jake. You see, so, hey, the Moabites know, know who we are. The Moabites know that we the children of Israel, you know, and, and, they, and they're um, and they're for in our affliction, too. You yep. know, um, go on the menu and... Hey, Jake think they eating, they eating chicken and steak, but really you eating cats and dogs. Yo, Psalms the eighty third chapter says they built a, 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 a toll mill, a toll mill yep. against thee. Uh, uh, verse seventeen. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. You see, and that's and the Lord is going. That's that's the Lord is going to. Um, that's righteous. You know that that's a righteous uh, recompense. You know, so to say. You know, okay, hey, cause we 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 getting beat down by all y'all nations, man. You know, you go in the hood. You go in the hood, uh, who, who own the corner stores? Uh, uh, Elon, you know, Ishmael, all of that, selling our people cigarettes, uh, blood wrappers, you know, uh, liquor stores are open at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Why? So, so they can keep Jake destroyed, okay? And it says, 18, in the house of Jacob shall be a fire, in the house of Joseph a flame, in the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for Yahweh by Shemal Shai's company. And that's, and that's going into after the, the thousand years of slavery, and Esau is going to be burnt up, and then we're going to gather their ass up, and we're going to throw them into the fire. And that's their future. You know? That's right. Uh, 
Lamentations 4, verse 22. It says, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So the Lord, you know, after this captivity, is going to be no more. All right, you know, it's not going to be Esau coming into power. You no, know, none of that. You know, we're going to rule forever. Uh, and it says, He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. O, o daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins, and that's what the Lord is doing now. The Lord is discovering the sins of the so-called enemy. That's, so that's right. why, you know, we, we bring out all these different uh, things that, that Esau does, you know, that's uh, unrighteous decrees, all these unrighteous decrees, all these secret things that Esau is doing under the table. We are discovering it through the spirit power of the Yahweh. Scripture talking about breaking down the stronghold. You know, this place got built up off God, but hey, through the spirit of power of Yahweh, Shema Shah, to get with the apostles, and the elder brothers on down, hey brothers are are uh, breaking down those strongholds, breaking down those lies, all right, and declaring it uh, through the Bible, you know. Oh, go ahead. This is uh, Jeremiah the forty ninth chapter, verse twelve, and it reads, "For they, for thus saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it." Yep. That's Oh, got it. Well, that's what happened, man. He gonna drink up that cup, man. Right? You know, it was like they wasn't drinking up it at first, man. But now that cup is gonna go past them, and they gonna drink of that cup, man. They gonna receive that wrath of y'all by Shem outside. The curse gonna be upon them, man. Right. Get that hell. They gonna catch that hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna get a double portion. Yeah. 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 How long? How long <laughs> we been slaves? For well, over four hundred, maybe five hundred years. Hey, but y'all gonna have double that. You gonna have a thousand years. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we're going to have spiritual power. We're going to be breaking your ass into pieces. Hey, man, that, that's the future for you, uh, Edomites, man. Come on. Book of Second, look, look, look of Second Thessalonians, chapter 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Howard to recompense tribulation to them that trust you. So that's that balance. You know what you get. What you put in, what you get out. Like, that's right. Like the brother said, they're going to get double. That's right. Did 400 years, I'm going to do 1,000. That's right. Job 20, starting at verse 15. He has swallowed down riches, he shall vomit them up again. The most high shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of ass, the viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey, and butter. So even the new world order is not going to come to full fruition, man. That's right. That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be and he shall not rejoice therein. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away a house which he builded not. That's right, the poor being who? The Israelites, man, you know? But you got it, brother. You got a pre? Who got a pre? Jeremiah 55, 25, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountains, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and roll thee from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. Yeah. Speaking about uh, America, man. You know? Hey, uh, can you read that again, Pop? Jeremiah 51 and 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. And the destroying mountain is Esau. This is his rulership which destroyeth all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand and roll thee down from the rocks. I will make thee a burnt mountain. Yep. Esau, he destroyed the whole earth, you know? Physically, spiritually, you know? You, 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 go, you go to the ocean, ocean look like shit. You know, why? Because you're taking out, you're taking out all the animals that the Lord created for a purpose to clean the ocean. Yep. You're destroying the ocean, uh, animals are, are 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 in slavery too. When you go to them zoos, that's nothing but but a prison for them for them animals, man. You know the air with chemtrails in it, water it got fluoride in it. You know Esau burning all the farmland. Yep. You know, and uh, I got a precept. This Isaiah 34 and one. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all the things that come forth of it. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Okay, and, this, and uh, all them armies, they're going to be Please. gathered up in the land of Jehoshaphat over there in the Middle East. And the Lord is going to destroy all, all the armies of these nations. 
says verse 3, their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Okay, and that scroll is speaking about that mushroom cloud that it speaks about in uh, Revelation 6 and 13. Hey, the Water Brothers for the uh, comments and the precepts. Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast its birth on timely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Yeah, that mighty wind is speaking about those missiles, man. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Yep. Uh, hey, because after those missiles come, it's going to be a, a, big, a big mushroom cloud, you know? And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Yep, and the book of Isaiah said they shall rock to and fro like a drunkard. So this place is like, like a, you see a homeless man, you know, drunk off his ass. He can't, he can't keep his balance. You know, and that's how, that's how uh, America is going to get rocked, man. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, the Lord going to cleanse this place. All right, but going back to Isaiah 34 and 4, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and their hosts shall fall down and the leaf off, I mean, the leaf falleth off the vine as a falling fig from the fig tree. And those, that fig falling from the fig tree is speaking about the missiles, okay? Because when you have like a, a, a orange tree in the back of your house or a fruit tree, you know, if a wind comes, you know, when it's when that time where it falls off, you know, even if you're in a house, you can hear those, you can hear that fruit uh, hit the ground. <laughs> uh, verse uh, five, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven, Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Okay, and Idumia, that's a Greek way of uh, speaking about the Edomites. Right? All right, and it says, and, uh, and upon my people of my curse to judgment. Okay, who are the people of the Lord's uh -huh. curse? The Edomites. And it says, you know, in the book of uh, uh, Hebrews that they, that Esau, he would have uh, inherited the blessing, but he, he was rejected. He sought it carefully with tears. Mm -hmm. All right, verse six. For the, sword, for the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made with fatness. And the blood of lambs and goats with the fat of kidneys of rams. So the, so the uh, goat, the lambs, all right, that's speaking about the people. The people are going to be the sacrifice. Because back in the ancient world, okay, we would sacrifice, you know, goats and rams, things of that nature. Okay, okay, but in this time, the people are going to be the sacrifice. All right, and it says, with the fat of kidneys of rams, for the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra. And Basra was a city in Edom. And it says, in a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. You know? That's right. And that goes back to our Psalms 37 as well. Psalms 37 and I believe uh, verse 20. It says, but the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. So what do you do with the fat of lambs on an altar? You burn it. Okay, when you go back to the law, you, you separated the fat from the from the animal to burn it on the altar, man. All right? So it's the same thing. America's getting ready to be a big altar, man. You know, scriptures speak about how, you know, you're going to have those who, who cry from the oppressors in land of Egypt, okay? And how Yahweh Shemesh is going to burn this place, man. That's in the book of Isaiah. Uh, uh, hey, just turn the uh, screen down somehow. Uh. As low as you can with it and still see it. Uh, but uh, I want to also say, uh, somebody can uh, get the definition of altar from A L T A R, not E R. The no. word for uh, altar is mazabak. Ultimately, when you say, you know, you're going to camp, you know, bless the camp, you know, there's a as well. But you you, you can say, Yahweh uh, Shemiah Shai Barak Mazabak number, right? Which means, Lord, please bless our camp, bless the altar today. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but an altar is meant for a place for sacrifices. You know, uh, uh, whoever got it. The definition for altar, a table or flat top block used as the focus for religious ritual, especially for making sacrifices for a You see that? So it's, it says a table that in, you, when you have, a, when you go into a, like so-called Christian churches, right? They always have this thing right in the front that's supposed to be the so-called altar. And they'll say, who want to present themselves before the altar? But back in those times when you had a table that meant for sacrifices, but this is a table that we have out here. That's when you go into Psalms, the 23rd chapter, it says, uh, 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 about presenting the table before me in front in, in front of my enemies. That This is a table. This is an altar now, right? Giving righteous sacrifices unto the Heavenly Father. And now what are our sacrifices? Your sacrifice now is your body, your time, your energy, your worship, your commitment, 
right? Somebody can give me Romans 12 and 1 too. This is a sacrifice that we're making, right? We're, we're, we are now, right, the Messiah is the first sacrifice, but now we're following his stead by making our lives a sacrifice. You see, so as we present ourselves in this mazabak, that's what we ask the Lord that hopefully our sacrifices are pleasing in his eyes, man. You know? The book of, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. You see that? It said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. So now, when, you, when people try, when you say that this is an altar, People will walk up and down here and they might not think that that's why my old boy spent here. It like it get it two percent offended me. Yep. You know what yep. I'm saying? Yep. Because yep. It's like, oh, this is an altar, but he was just pissed, he was just going off. But he don't understand that. But this is an altar in a roundabout way, the people understand that. You see, and that's why a lot of people they walk around. Because if you walk through here, you might get sacrificed too. You see what I'm saying? You might you might get put up on that altar and hey, get get cut, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, but we're, we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Just like our Lord gave up his life for us, we are now doing the same in return by coming out weekly, right, and presenting our bodies so that the Lord can accept us. Because, hey, to be received of the Lord, he needs a sacrifice, right? You know what I'm saying? So the Lord, the Lord is about, the Lord has always been about sacrifices now since the beginning of the Bible. Hey, matter of fact, you can read that in Genesis when it came to uh, Abel and Cain, right? What happened? But he, the Lord said, all right, you need to prepare a sacrifice for me. And Cain gave an unrighteous sacrifice. So the heavenly Yahweh has always been about sacrifice from the beginning of time until now, man. And so now we have to keep in that stand by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And so if you plan on getting beamed up, you got to make a sacrifice, man. You know, you can't just be out here, oh, living all willy-nilly and think you ain't just got to do nothing. And you plan on getting on a, chair, on a chariot. Yeah, that's why two-thirds are giving a sacrifice that wasn't commanded of the Heavenly Father. The, the Heavenly Father and His Son commanded us to be out on these highways right, and byways. You know, but two-thirds of our people, they want to give fruit. They want to just go feed the poor and feed the homeless. You know, and they thinking that they're doing a good job. You know, they want to go and help people get jobs. They want to, you know, do what, do what most people would do in the Christian churches. That's not what was commanded of the Heavenly Father and His Son. You know, doing what we're doing out here on the highways and byways and, and, and fishing for the elect. This is what we were commanded to do. This is the sacrifice that the Heavenly, Heavenly Father wants us to do. That's right. All right? Not what the world tells you to do. And I don't want you to ask something. Yeah, this is uh, Galatians. I want to go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2, starting at uh, verse 20. All right? Because it says, now we're living sacrifices. So if you're alive and you're the sacrifice, What's being sacrificed? What's dying? <laughs> hey, that's what uh, that's what uh, Isaac said. He was like, he was like, Father, where, 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 where's the sacrifice? You know, because the altar was built. Yeah. He looked around. He was like, oh, oh, hey. <laughs> that, that's a good question, brother. He said, Who's dying? What's dying? The scriptures, two things, two scriptures come to mind. It says, Mortify yeah. your members. All right. So you got to kill off your old self. You're, you know what I'm saying? And also, um, the one that says, The inward man is renewed day by day. But we die daily. You see what I'm saying? So we're sacrificing the we're sacrificing our flesh. We're sacrificing the, the parts of ourselves that were wicked and that were not of the Heavenly Father. We sacrifice, uh, we don't long, no longer want adultery, no longer want uh to smoke, no longer want to pollute ourselves, man. You know? Yeah, right. The second Corinthians 4 and 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's right. The outward man perish, but the inward man is being renewed by day by day. So it's it's really a trade-off when you really think about it. You see, the more you shed off that flesh, the more the spirit can enter into you, man. So it's really a righteous trade-off if you understand, man. But it say we die daily, man, but the outward man perish. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, shit, you know, we 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 just uh uh we getting we getting older in this flesh. You know, I was talking to the brother Masha, you know, Masha, he's a, the aged man of the, of, the, of the group. You know what I'm saying? Masha was like, shit, you know, the body ain't quite moving like it used to. But I'm like, hey, brother, we need new bodies. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he, that brother's still out here toiling for the Lord. You see what I'm saying? But that's another sacrifice you're making. Your body, you, even your body, even though they decrepit, we're still out here praising the Lord in these decrepit, vile bodies. But these people use their vile bodies to go and be more polluted, to be more be more defiled, man. You see, and just continuously be wicked. You know. This Colossians three and three, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Yahushua and the Most High. 
So we are dead. We dead unto this world. Okay, we, we waiting. Uh, it's going to keep saying verse 4. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. You know, and that's when we truly going to be living. That's when we truly going to be alive. But hey, we dead. We dead unto this world. You know, when Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, it scripture says we, we shall be glad with exceeding joy. You know? And that's, that's when we truly going to be happy and truly live. This is uh, Galatians 2 and 20. It says, I am crucified with my shock. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but my shock liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the Most High, who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's what's living. That's that living sacrifice, man. What's, what got sacrificed, what got killed off was our old man. You know, but, but what's alive now within us is Yahweh Shai. Like, you know, when you watch those scary movies, somebody gets possessed and they're like, you know, Sydney isn't here anymore. <laughs> it's the same thing with us on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, Jason ain't here no more. Yeah. You know, Mike from the block, he ain't here no more. Yeah. Now, you, you know, whatever brother you are in the truth, with Yahweh Shai living inside you. That's right. Hey, what's that, uh, Mark 5 or Mark 9? Just like when uh, the man was had on the, the chains and he was tearing himself. And things like that, you know, and he had legion on him, right? You know, he had that demon on him, but when that that, that, that demon left, it went into the pigs, it went into the swine. But then they said that man was not, not clothed and in, his right in his right mind, you see? But now it's that, that, that demon's out of you, man, right? The Lord took that legion off of you, man. Yeah, hey, go ahead. No, you gotta go. I was going to say, because all of us, you know, we, when, we, when we were in the world, we had like a worldly demon lingering around us, you know? Every day you wake up, he the same demon be like, you finna roll that blood up this morning? Yep, yep. All right, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we all had that worldly demon, but when you come to the truth, that demon leaves. You know what I'm saying? And now you kill off the old man, but every now and then that demon will try to pop back up because spirits don't necessarily die. Yep. So that demon will try to come back around, and he just waiting outside the door. He's waiting outside the house, man, to just open the door and let him in. Yeah, we were talking about uh, 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 guns recently, right? The, the, the brothers, talking about this gun, right, that, that uh, it might have a spirit on it. You see what I'm saying? Then we were talking about like inanimate objects don't necessarily have, like a gun, don't got a spirit of its own. But it's probably a demon sitting around with that gun. Wherever this gun go, I'm going to travel and somebody's going to try to commit suicide with you. You hey, see what I'm saying? That's why in the, in the street, you would ask the homie, you'd be like, it's got bodies on it. It's got bodies on it. You know what I'm saying? How many bodies on it? You want to know. Yeah, how many hands on it? How many bodies you got on it, man? You see? And so this is why you got to understand the Lord and working with spirits, man. You see? But at the end of the day, these spirits are real, man. People don't understand that. These right, the, the right, there's spirits on the right hand and there's spirits on the left hand. The Lord even in, in uh, 1 Kings 22 and 22, he said, who's going to go up? He said, I'm going to put a lion, lion spirit unto that man, man. Spirits are real and people don't understand that. All the spirits and the energy is real, but people will deny that because they like the wickedness. They like the evil spirits. They like the evil energy instead of tapping into the Lord, man. And that's when you're going to end up in a bad situation, especially when you've been warned of your wickedness, man. You know? But somebody are saying, I don't know. This is uh, Tobit chapter 6, verse 14. It says, and now... I am the only son of my father's, and I am afraid, lest if I go in unto her, I die as the other before. For a wicked spirit loveth her, which hurteth nobody but those which come unto her. Wherefore I also fear, lest I die and bring my father's and my mother's life, because uh, of, of me to the grave with sorrow, for they have no other son to bury them. The point being, when you read the book of Tobit in context, he said a wicked spirit loveth her. He's talking about his wife. All right, Tobias' his wife because before she married Tobias, all the other husbands she had, that demon killed them. Right. You know, every time they went into her, he, he killed them. So some people literally have certain demonic uh, energies following them. Yep. Like, you know, certain people say he has a dark cloud over him. Certain people have just demons lingering around them. Same thing with objects. You know, some objects you see are cursed, like little uh, wicked dolls and shit like that, because they got demonic energies around them. You know, not necessarily inside of it, but around it. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn, man, how many, as many times I fixed this car, man, it's always giving me problems. Yeah, Boom. yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you give it to somebody else, you're like, hey, that's, that's your problem. It's been, it's been, I forgot, I can never remember the name of it, but it was a movie about a car, 
and the car was alive. Right, you're and right. And it, it right. in the middle of the night, it'll wake up and go kill people. Dude, it was right. a, car, oh, no. a car? It was a car. It's an old school, like, red car. I cannot remember. It's one of the old school movies. It was an old school movie. Yeah. It would wake up in the middle of the night, about. it would kill people, and the car would be crushed and total. But before, it, in the morning, it would go back to its owner's house and rebuild itself and look like a brand new car. Yeah. The car had a spirit on it. You see what I'm saying? I got I gotta look up the name of that movie. Uh, shit, I ain't got my other phone. Quick three. Yeah, just Number is 23 and 23. Huh? Christine! Christine. <laughs> and it's, of course the name of a woman, Christine. <laughs> yeah, so I can't hear the Number 23 and 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, God has the most high rock. And I brought that out. Not the block. Somebody said I need help. Yeah, I need help. Go ahead, yeah, you got it, brother. So lock in. The brother brought October to have the wicked spirit and love uh, to Tobias' wife, Sarah. But uh, it the wicked spirit didn't harm Tobias because he was the man of the Lord, man. All right? So there's no enchantment for Jacob, man. Hey, that's why he was afraid, but, but the angel kept re giving him reassurance. Look, you're going to marry her, and I perceive you're going to have children, too. You know, so that's that cover we're going to have in the time of trouble. So, brother, you know, you know, your flesh might get the best of you every now and then, but the spirit kick in, you know, and then you'd be like, no, y'all watch no shot, I got it, you know, you know, need to doubt, and you don't have to doubt, I, I mean, I, Lord willing, I'm going to do a video on this, there's no need for you to doubt the Lord if he's not your enemy, huh. the scriptures say, never trust your enemy, so to not trust somebody means you doubt their intentions, so if you never trust the Lord, then the Lord might just be your enemy then, you know, because why are you so doubtful, if he's supposed to be your friend, why would you doubt his good intentions for you, man? Hey, one of the things the scripture tells you, Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Yep. You can't have no doubt. That's why. No, nah, I was gonna say. Uh, that's why this uh, sloppy to cut you off first and foremost. But that's why you know when you doubt the Lord, a lot of times when you go off and you start to doubt, like fuck, man, is the Lord gonna look out for me? You know, I did just go off, but that's because you went off. Peter. Peter. Yep. Perfect example. Yeah. Peter started walking on water. A little bit of that doubt creeping in, it's like, oh shit. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you can't have doubt, man. When, especially, man, you gotta really think about it. We serve with the ultimate power, the ultimate creator, the creator of everything. Ain't no need for doubt, man. Nah. Truly, that's really just flesh and demons creeping in, honestly. Yep. Cause say, so, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, it's saying in the scripture, you know, they, that he closed the field, you know, how much more us? Right. You know? It's no, and you really want to practice your faith in these times, man. Now is not the time to doubt the Lord. You know, and if something doesn't happen, if you pray for it, that doesn't mean that the Lord didn't hear your prayer or, you know, that you just lack faith. Certain things are just the Lord's will, you know? And, and it's also timing, too. You might want it right now in that moment, but the Lord might make you not get it so that he can set you up for something greater, man. It's like, you know? Somebody get Hebrews 6 and 4? Somebody had put it on the comment board. And so, man, the Lord is perfect. Everything the Lord does is calculated, it's perfection. Man. Um, if you purchase out by small sign, ask for something, you ain't get it right there in that moment. Say so you ain't get it a month later, or however long you get it, sometimes later, and it's just perfect when you got it. It says it in due season. Uh, everything's yep. done in due season with the Lord. The Lord is a perfectionist, man. Not our will, but In due season you shall reap. Uh, this is Hebrews 6 and 4. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit of so, like so like I think I'm in like four and six, it's like it's impossible to please and yeah, without it. faith. Oh, he was 11. Oh. He was 11 and uh, verse four, no, he was 11 and six. He was 11 and six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to y'all must shy must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently sin. Right, and that's what the Heavenly Father's name means. He is, he exists. You know, so you gotta believe that that, that he is real, man. Because it's impossible. You know, it's not it's impossible to please y'all by Shem Shah if you don't believe him, man. and the unbelieving will be cast into the lake of fire. You know, 2nd Acts 15 says, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. So if you lack faith in the Lord, you're gonna die, period. Okay? Period. No good hands and butts. Straight up, man. Lord, and no good hands and butts.
Hudson. Hey, because the Heavenly Father, man, he the creator of the heavens and the universe, man. For you to doubt him is really a slap in the face. Right. Mm -hmm. After everything he made. That's nice. disrespectful. Yeah. That's disrespectful as fuck, man. That's why niggas got to get put to death. Painfully. Yep. What does it say? Death by pain. Death by pain, huh? Man, you fucking niggas are disrespectful, man. Yep, because it says that, that the Lord, is, he's a jealous power. Yeah. You know, so if you serving somebody else other than him, he's going to be jealous. And it says jealousy is the rage of a man. So the Lord going Lord gonna to put it on you. Yeah. That's it. This is James chapter 5, starting at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it. Until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Alright? This is why we gotta be long suffering, man. The husbandman, meating the farmer, he waited for the the, 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 the latter and the fourth of rain. So he gets the precious fruit. That's what we're waiting for. The rain of our, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai, and get the fruit of our salvation. The Lord will, man. But wait, it, got, it takes patience, man. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight, man. It's not gonna stop happening to the truth, man. We gotta be willing to when we go put into work, man. Alright? Book of Syrac, chapter 51, verse 30. Work your work. Work your work, B time, and then this time we will give you more. Yeah, that word B time goes into always, always abounding in your work. But work your work always, and in his time he's gonna give you your into the Lord, man. Alright? It's not gonna it's not gonna come on your time. Alright? Everything moves on y'all watching y'all side the clock, man. Everything is done in his season, man. You can't rush the Lord, man. Who are we, man? Nothing but worms out here, man. Yeah, that's why, you know, always, man, you know, the scriptures, the scriptures say, uh, uh, you know, talk about uh, how how Yahweh Shah is going to reward his men. You know, I, like I said, I was talking about the Sopranos thing and how, you know, the son in there got into this point where he's like, what's the purpose of life? Why are we here? Why are we born? Well, hey, if you read Ecclesiastes 12 13, you would know. You know what I'm saying? Pe pe people thinking they be born because they can paint and they be like, the Lord made me. I was created to be a great artist. No, you were created to fear the Heavenly Father and keep his commandments, right? But he happened to give you a skill of an artist, a skill of a painter, man. You know what I'm saying? But we, real talk, the meaning for existence is simple as that. We were created to fear the Most High and keep his commandments. You want to know what's your purpose on earth, that's it. Now, granted, within that purpose, we all have lots. You see what I'm saying? So it's our lot to prophesy his word. But at the end of the day, we, uh, your purpose is to fear the Most High and keep his commandments. Now. The, uh, even say by technicality, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, that's the spirit that even a so-called white man gonna come in, right? He gonna have to keep the commandments too, and he gonna have to fear the Most High too. But is he doing that right now? Absolutely not. He think his purpose is to be wicked. His purpose right now is to be a demon. That's the so-called white man's purpose is to be wicked right now, man. You know, it says that he is our sword, man. You know, so that that was that's his job right now. But that's about to change. That's about to change all of his resources. All his money, all his guns, all that's about to be taken away, man. Uh, you have some brother, yes, bro? Uh, like yeah, the yeah. brother said, that's our only duty. Like the book Ecclesiastes says, the last verse, chapter 13, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Like the brother said, that's our whole existence. That's what we should center on and go about. And see, that's what you listen to in the damn philosophy. Like, some, sometimes philosophers have some golden nuggets. Right, you gotta you gotta separate the meat from the bones when you're dealing with them. But these philosophers, they'll have your mind thinking all kinds of things you ain't supposed to be thinking. You know what I'm saying? Especially, well, if you don't have understanding, you see what I'm saying? So that's the problem with the, with the uh, I forgot what the word uh, uh, philosophy. It kind of goes in the study of wisdom. Yeah, love, love of wisdom. The love of wisdom. Yeah, uh, Sophos is in there. You know what I'm saying? Sophia. You know, it's the stu study and love of wisdom. You see what I'm saying? But that's wisdom don't mean thinking beyond uh, more than your strength. You see what I'm saying? You know, like, well, let, let's think how Yahweh made a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you're doing too much, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fall back, learn the things that's in the scriptures. All right? Like the apostles always say, keep it one deep, man. All right? What, what you got, though, bro? This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And therefore, will the heavenly Father, Yahweh, wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that ye may have mercy upon you. For the heavenly Father is a power of judgment. Blessed are 
all day that wait for him. Back in the Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That's right. To everything there's a time and a season for it, man. And so this is why you got to understand. So right now we're in a time of prophecy, right? Soon we're going to be in a time of, uh, 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 of uh, men, the Lord giving us spiritual powers. You see? So everything has a time and a season. But you just got to be just like the seasons, right? If you, if you love the fall, you got to be patient and wait till the leaves start falling. You know, go ahead, bro. Yep, yep. Verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a time for that. Go ahead. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Mm -hmm. A time to kill and a time to heal. That's right. So this is how you know people don't read the Bible, man. You see what I'm saying? And that's a cut we were talking about the other day, too. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, 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 that's what it is. You see? <laughs> Spiritual. That's what it is. Sometimes that's what how the Lord got things set up. Sometimes you're going to heal people in jail trouble. Sometimes you might put people to death. Right. Go ahead. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep, weep. And a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Right. So right now we're in a time of, a time of weeping and mourning now. But the time will come where is it a time for us to be laughing and mourning? I mean, laughing and rejoicing because that's what these people are in right now. You know, so it's going to be a world reversal. Okay. Uh, verse 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sue, a time to salaki, a time to rent, and a time to sow, and a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. That's right. See there? Oh, the Lord got a time for everything, man. So you got time to keep silence, time to speak. Times when things got to be torn. Times when things got to be put together. You see? So right now, he broke our, our old, that old man down and built us up in the spirit, man. And so now the Lord is in the time where his son is about to return to this earth, man. This we a time where judgments are about to uh, be uh, grievously put upon Babylon, America. We're in the time of, of men repenting, but we're also in the time of men getting destroyed. You see? And all of this is going to come into fruition when these words are fulfilled, man. And the Lord says, uh, 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 this generation shall not pass away till all these words be fulfilled, man. You see? So that, that was the point on that. Right now, it's, it's also a season of those uh, wicked grapes being, uh, being right it's going to be a time for the Lord to come in and harvest over. That's right. That's right. And, and how, how do those grapes get ripe into the wickedness of this world? That's why you're seeing so much folly. That's why you're seeing iniquity be increased because that's that, that's that field getting ripe. You know, like when you read in Genesis when the Lord told Abraham how the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. That's how the most high judges the heathen. It's like he's like he's growing up field with, with plants and vegetations and then finally it's time to reap the harvest. Lord lets them get so wicked to a point where he's like, all right, now I got to make inquisition. Same now, thing with Babylon. Sins yep. reach up to heaven. Yep. So the Lord's like, now we get, the Lord, that's why the Lord sent the angels to go and said the cry of Babylon is great, man. You know, so it's the same thing now in these times. The cry of this place is great. You know, we're coming into a time of trouble the world's never seen before, man. Can you imagine the type of evils and wickedness people are going to be coming in trouble? You know, let alone now. So when your house starts coming back, it's just going to be right for the table. Ooh. Somebody get second Ezra 15, 6 and 7. That's, that's going on with y'all saying right here. Second Ezra chapter 15, starting at uh, verse 6. 
for wickedness and exceeding polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Okay? Yeah. Their hurtful works are fulfilled, man. It says, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit. And how is the Lord not holding his tongue now? Through his men out here preaching his word. Really, the Lord started to uh, stop holding his tongue when he raised up Abba Bibbins on the scene. Okay? It said, Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. All right, so the Lord, he's not, he's not giving you the green light to be wicked, man. Okay, it says, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So that's the point, you know? And like it says, the righteous uh, complain continually, man. The souls of the just complain continually. That's here on earth and in the spirit realm. Okay, you got the men of the Lord, Ezekiel 94, Sign and crying, okay, and then you got people in the spirit realm who died, man. All right, who, who also sign and crying and righteous y'all bunch of those died, man. Hey, um, uh, see now, brother, you brought up your point. You know that was that the brother brought up that a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Like the, like the, when that, that uh, what's that? Second Ezra fifteen goes into that. It says the Lord shall hold, no longer hold his tongue. So the Lord was even keeping silence. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Lord was keeping silence. But when you put our business back on the scene, the Lord, all right, that's enough. It's time for me to uh, get my men out there and get these prophecies fulfilled. You okay. see, but there was a time period where, where uh, the Lord the Lord uh, kept his peace. He didn't have his prophets speaking out. You know what I'm saying? Times where uh, uh, we didn't know the name of the Lord. You know, that was the Lord keeping silence. You know? And now that, now that we got the name, I cannot imagine not having it. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord judged us like that the first time. He said, so since we had his name before and we used it wickedly and our people are using it uh, uh, with villainy, you know, he took it away. But now we've gotten it back and now we treasuring it, right? Like that goodly pearl, man, all right? Who sell of everything he has so we can purchase it, man. Because we, you know? see, we see his power. That's right. You know, by the Lord bringing us back into remembrance, it's like, dang, man, the Lord, man, the Lord done jacked us up. He said he did what he said he was gonna do, man. That's great fear, man. And then also uh, returning unto him and see, seeing his judgment, you know, learning of his ways and seeing his judgment. You, 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 it, it'll, it'll, it'll be seen in your mind, never to forget the name of the heavenly Father and His Son. Yeah, right, this is uh, Psalm 50, starting at verse 21. It says, "These things hast thou done, and I kept silence, though thou thoughtest that it says thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself." But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So like the brother said, there's a point in time where the Lord kept silence, man. Okay, uh, you know, what in Revelation, those three days and a half, that 350 year period, Yahweh yeah. yeah. was not hearing our prayers. He's like, he heard us, but he wasn't answering our prayers yeah. or nothing like that, man. The Lord wasn't dealing with us like that. He took away his name, he took away our heritage, okay? But now the Lord is reproving Esau through his men on the scene, and now he's setting us back in order. How is he setting us back in order? First and foremost, giving us that name. You know, giving us the name, like the brother said. Uh, tells us in the land of our captivity, oh, we shall remember ourselves, man. You know, and call and think upon the Lord's name, man. All right? And, and praise him, praise his name in the land of our captivity. Every time we start a video, what do we do? We fulfill that prophecy every time we start a video. Because we give praise to Yahweh in the land of our captivity. That's right. That's right. And yeah, we're going to, hey, yeah, we're going to praise him. We gonna pray. Hey, now we got his name, Lord willing, we those men. We gonna praise him for eternity now, man. You know what I'm saying? We now in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, no matter how many billions or trillion years in the future, we every day we gonna be giving the Lord the praise, and the whole world gonna be doing. It. That's the thing. The whole world gonna be doing. It. it ain't gonna be just us no more, man. Can you imagine the vibration of everybody on the earth waking up giving praise to the Lord, man? It's a whole different vibration rather than everybody in here being individuals giving praise to different gods. Uh, Yarraqua, Yarraqua. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's different. It's a different vibe out here, man. You know, it's a different, whole different vibe that the men gonna be serving the Lord, giving glory to Him. You got out of one. Zechariah 14 and 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and His name one? Okay. So the Lord's gonna be king over all the earth, and His name is gonna be one. So everybody's gonna know the Most High for Yahweh, and they're gonna know His Son's name for Yahweh Shai. One name. Everybody's gonna know that one name. That's right. You know, like the scripture says that they may call upon me in one consent, man. 
How are we gonna call upon the Lord one consent when we all got different answers? You know? And also, man, through the Spirit, you know, like it says in Isaiah 19, uh, we're gonna cry unto the Lord because they're oppressors, man. We get that real quick, Lord willing. Right, after that, brothers, if y'all got any finals, we can start rapping. And battery about oh, that. Isaiah 19 and uh Oh the strong that's it. Isaiah 19 verse 18. And it says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. So so it says they're gonna speak the language of Canaan in the land of Egypt. That we're in Egypt now spiritually, America, Revelation 11 and 8. What's the language of Canaan? The, the so-called, uh, well, I don't want to say so-called, but the Paleo-Hebrew, man, all right, or the ancient Phoenician Hebrew, which is the same thing, because Phoenician really goes back to Canaan or Canaanite. So whenever you see Phoenician Hebrew, it's really saying language of Canaan, as the scriptures say. Got it? Con, verse 19. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. This is your altar. This is that scripture being fulfilled right before your eyes. Like, you know, Yahweh Shah, he opened up the books and said, this day has this scripture been fulfilled before your eyes. This day has this scripture been fulfilled. Hey, real quick. You know, you know there's an altar because what, what, what do you have in the altar? You got the table. You got the, the, the Bible. Right? You got the trumpet. And that's yep. the voice. You got the incense. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it has all the elements and you got a sacrifice. Right. So you got all the elements of an altar. So the devil lets you know that this scripture is true. You got it, brother. Right? And it says, and a pillar at the border thereof up to the Lord. All right, and it, and, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior and a great one. And he shall deliver them. Yeah, for you Old Testament only Israelites. Who the fuck is that talking about, man? Uh -huh. Who's that talking about? Uh -huh. The savior. Delivering us from our captivity? Come on, man. Here we Old are. Only, yeah. Yeah, for you Old Testament only Israelites, man. Oh, that's talking about King David. No, it's not talking about King David. Let's talk about our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. Hey, but see, there's a, a big misconception with uh, the Old Testament people that would speak because I've been going into Ishmael more lately. You know, I like cutting Ishmael. You know what I'm saying? Because they think they got it. I like cutting Ishmael. So they even, they believe when uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18, when it says they shall raise him a, a prophet of thy brethren, they think that's talking about goddamn Muhammad. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So they, 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 don't, they don't have it. It's not all the way there. And they, you know that they don't understand the scriptures because they think Muhammad was the last prophet. Right? But you know that's incorrect because 1 Corinthians 14 and 32 says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. So the prophets are going to come back. So if Muhammad was the last prophet, that means the world is doomed. Because you, you no longer, that means, and if that's the case, if Muhammad was the last prophet, all of the, all of the you so-called Muslims need to shut the hell up. Because the prophets, the only ones need to be speaking. You see? Because the, the, the men of the Lord are the mouthpieces of the Heavenly Father. So that means all you Muslims out here talking, y'all need to be quiet. What was, the, what was Muhammad prophesying about that? Man, I, tried to look it. I, was, I was trying to look them up, man. Some of the shit they was making up, it was just bullshit, bro. You know what I'm saying? They're not true prophecies. Right. You know? You got it, bro. Just a little cut on that. Amos 2 and 11, too. But go ahead. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 10, verse, let me get to the point, verse 10, and it says, I'll start at verse 9. And when I, when I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book, and he said unto me, take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. So this is John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. It says, Thou must prophesy again, meaning that he's back here again prophesying, man, showing that the incarnation is real. Real quick, uh, you got that Amos? Uh, Amos chapter 2, verse 11. And I raised up of your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarites. It is not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord. See that? The Lord said he raised up. If you, if you want to be a prophet, you have to be an Israelite. Point blank, period. If you're so anybody, anybody on this earth that tells you they're a prophet, you ask them, are, they an, are you an Israelite? 
right? Because according to the Bible, that's the point blank period. That's the case. If you're not an Israelite, you cannot be a prophet. And just because you're an Israelite does not mean you're a prophet. You see? But when you come with understanding this Bible, they got, if you're a prophet, you're supposed to be prophesying, man. Hey, get out the car and talk to us then, bro. That's the second time. Since you got the truth, get out the car and talk to us, man. That's the second time. Yeah, see, so you ain't got it. You need to be out here teaching us then. Yeah, long ass dress. You got dress. That's why you got the truth. Well, if you got the truth, you need to be out here teaching the people. You got on them damn sunglasses and dress, shaking your head, acting like you got something, bro. And you were a drive by scarfer in the goddamn passenger of your woman's BMW. Man, get your ass out of here, man. You ain't got it, bro. And this is what I'm talking about. Just because you're an Israelite, don't mean you're a prophet, bro. You see? Knowing them, they'll whip you when you come back and scoff in the car. We'll get out the car and talk, man. You see, the demon's coming out. You know, soon we about to wrap up, the demon's coming out. <laughs> he drove by, he drove by, he said. I said. Yep. But hey, man, you think else, brothers? I want to say, Lord, we know we are those prophets, but there's many prophets. Lord, that are in this book, chapter 44, verse 9, and some there be which have no memorial or perish as though they have never been, and are become as though they have never been born in their true nature. Hey, because at the end of the day, the day, this is what you gotta understand too. Sometimes you will read the Bible and it, it'll just say a prophet came came near, you know, in a uh, company of prophets. Sometimes men were spoken about, but their name might not have been written. That don't mean they're not written in the book, though. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, if you doing this work right in righteous sincerity, following the correct doctrine, man, you know, Lord, we don't we those prophets. You know, we don't go around. Yeah, I'm a prophet. Yeah, I'm a prophet. You know what I'm saying? You don't go doing that. You know, we'll say, a Lord willing, we men of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But shit, sometimes, like I told brother, sometimes you got to cut it straight with people, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes in your day life, people are, are you a prophet? Yeah. You wanted to ask? So yeah, yeah, I am. You know what I'm saying? But Lord willing, we are, man. You know? And prophet, the really prophet means to say before, man. So all we're doing, we can tell you in the judgments. You know, the Lord gave us the download for understanding. Lord willing, we be those men to receive his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so that we can impart it unto our people and unto this earth. But hey, man, we're going to wrap it up with that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. We want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Yahweh Double honors to the apostle and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. Uh, and I forgot to say, uh, we are the Hebrew Israelites. Coming in a week in, a week out, the prophesy the downfall of this wicked nation known as Babylon, which is America, according to the Bible. You so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel, according to the scriptures, and you so called white people, you other nations, you are going into slavery. So we're going to do that again. We want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, those men doing this work in sincerity and truth across the four corners of earth, and much love. Until next time, we say Shalom. 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 Baba Baba. 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 Ba